If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 26, Cloudy Turns Sunny Confident Miss Granger Hermione, wait for me, you're walking too fast. Cho Chong trotted after Hermione. Seeing the other party's angry face. She teased, what's the matter? Could it be that someone's night made her angry again? Cho, this joke isn't funny at all. I just think it's unfair. Why is Professor Snape unwilling to give us extra points when I answered all the questions correctly? After hearing this, Cho understood what was going on and started laughing, explaining to Hermione's dissatisfied eyes. Professor Snape is like this, even his own house rarely gets points, and the other houses even less. You should be glad you're not in Gryffindor, otherwise, don't talk about bonus points, you should thank Merlin if you don't lose points. And nobody does anything about it. Hermione grumbled. Why would they? The extra points are the professor's power and they are free to give or take them as they see fit, and even Headmaster Dumbledore has no right to interfere. After listening to that explanation Hermione's face relaxed a little. Seeing this, Cho brought the topic back to a certain night. Have you heard? Today your knight showed his prowess in Professor McGonagall's transfiguration class. He alone added 15 points to Slytherin. I heard that Professor McGonagall invited him to join the transfiguration club. Oh Merlin, that's the transfiguration club. Anyone who can join is a master of transfiguration. Hermione, did you know that Professor McGonagall has never invited someone so young, let alone a freshman? Something about Lucas in class. Of course Hermione knew even if she didn't see it with her own eyes. She can also imagine what Lucas looked like when he cast the spell. It should be the same as when he was on the train, calm, elegant, and smooth. Oh? It seems that someone is secretly happy for her night. Seeing the smile on the corner of Hermione's mouth, Cho immediately laughed out loud. Hermione smiled wryly and shook her head, Stop joking, he is so excellent, I... Oh, beautiful little witch! Are you troubled by love? No wonder your expression is wrong today. Hermione didn't refute, but smiled reluctantly, as an acknowledgement of the other party's words. Cho Chong walked up to Hermione quickly, blocking her way. Hermione, you have to be more confident. In my opinion, you are excellent. There is no one you are not worthy of. Besides, whether you are worthy or not is not up to you, let alone someone else, but Mr. Grindelwald's. Hermione, Maybe Mr. Grindelwald is also inquiring about your situation now, be confident, and don't forget that we are Ravenclaws. We are knowledgeable, smart, fair, and wise, and we have vision, but we never feel inferior, because these advantages are our confidence. Cho Chang's enlightenment obviously had an effect. Hermione changed from the dullness just now, and said with a smile, I never expected that you would be so good at comforting others. Cho shrugged, and just as she was about to speak, she saw Lucas coming from a distance. Hey, someone's night is coming. Why, are you envious? If it's you, I don't mind. No, the boy I like must be able to play Quidditch, and he must be better than me. Lucas watched the two future beauties running into the Great Hall. Doubt was written all over his face. Could it be that he is some kind of scourge? Why are they running away as soon as they see him coming? Walking into the Great Hall, Lucas went straight to Ravenclaw's long table. He is also considered a little famous now, and he is talking about a good reputation here. Seeing Lucas walking towards them, many girls in Ravenclaw start to organize their clothes. For the learned Ravenclaws, Lucas, who is also knowledgeable and wise, attracts their attention very much. It's a pity that Lucas didn't look at them at all, but sat directly next to Hermione. Beautiful lady, can I sit here and eat? Handsome sir, haven't you already sat down? Lucas probably understood at this moment why Hermione was afraid to face himself. He looked at her and said seriously. Hermione, I think the two of us need to talk. Okay, what are we talking about? Lucas thought for a moment before saying, I found that you've been weird since breakfast, but you don't look like you're being bullied. So, can you tell me why? Hermione lowered her head and whispered, It's nothing, it's all just my own wild imagination. Really? I thought you were upset that Professor Snape didn't give you a single point. Hermione suddenly looked to her side, you, you know. Of course, I went to Hufflepuff specifically to ask the ones who took the class with you. He did ask. Hermione stared blankly at the blonde boy beside her. She couldn't help but think back to Cho Chang's words just now. 
Perhaps Mr. Grindelwald is inquiring about you right now. Hermione's tense body gradually relaxed, and a smile appeared on her face. Humph, I'm Hermione Granger of Ravenclaw, just watch, I will definitely make Professor Snape add points for my house. Ambitious, then I wish Miss Hermione success in her difficult endeavor. Lucas was relieved to see Hermione back to normal. After taking a few casual bites, Lucas got up to leave. You only eat this little. Hermione asked curiously. Headmaster Dumbledore has something to talk about with me, I have to go to his office now, so I'll leave first. Looking at Lucas hurried back, Hermione thought for a while and took an apple and put it in her pocket. On the seventh floor, in front of the stone gargoyle. Lemon sherbet. As the password sounded, the stone gargoyle immediately moved aside and Lucas walked up the spiral stairs. As soon as he arrived at the headmaster's office, right before he could knock on the door an old voice came to his ears. You may come in, Mr. Grindelwald. Immediately afterwards he entered and saw Dumbledore's figure sitting behind his desk. His eyes hidden behind the glasses were fixed on the boy who was walking towards him. Chapter 27, Psychological Game, Greetings from an Old Friend Read 25 chapters ahead subscribing on my Patreon slash Mysterian 901. Albus Dumbledore. The greatest white wizard of the century. At this moment, he looked like nothing more than an amiable old man. Wearing a colorful wizard robe, and the end of his long gray beard specially tied with a bow. Mr. Grindelwald, I have been waiting to meet you for a long time. It's an honor to meet you, Headmaster Dumbledore. While speaking, Lucas stepped into the office and the first thing that caught his eyes were the books on the surrounding walls. On the left side of the office is a large desk with a variety of documents and books on top. It looked like Dumbledore wasn't usually having an easy time. Beside the desk stands a sycamore tree with a flaming turkey-looking bird dozing on it. Lucas will never admit that this ugly creature is a phoenix. Sensing Lucas' attention on him, Fox opened his eyes and let out a melodious cry. This surprised Dumbledore beside him because Fox never takes the initiative to get close to people. What he does not know is that it's all because of the affinity exuded by the elf blood. Fox couldn't help but want to get closer. Fox hasn't been this happy for a long time, it seems that I should have met you sooner. Dumbledore offered a seat in front of his desk. Lucas glanced at Fox's blown feathers. Once again, the old bee's ability to tell lies without blinking was verified. Headmaster. I wonder why you are looking for me. Nothing important, just wanted to talk with you, Lucas, can I call you that? Of course, it's my pleasure. Dumbledore smiled happily and wrinkled all over his face. Lucas, what a good name, it means light. Dumbledore took a box of treats from his pocket. Bertie bought multi-flavored beans, would you like some? No thanks. Lucas didn't want to try outlandish food. Dumbledore ate one himself and from his frowning, one could tell that the bean must not taste good. Wow, this is the worst bean I've ever had, Lucas, how is life treating you at Hogwarts? It's not bad, the climate is pleasant, the scenery is good, and the most important thing is that I can make friends. Yes, friends, we humans need friends so much, can you tell me the names of your friends? Certainly. Lucas directly said the names of Harry and the others. The whole time, Dumbledore seemed to be listening. Even when he heard Harry Potter's name there was no change in his expression either. He waited until Lucas finished speaking before he said with emotion, What an enviable friendship. Professor, do you have many friends like me? Of course, I have many friends, very many, and they often send me some small gifts. That's great. Lucas said enviously. Then not giving a chance for Dumbledore to keep talking he said, My father is about your age. He lives alone in a high tower. Even if I go to see him, I can only stay for a short time. Dumbledore's hand holding the teacup trembled slightly. Immediately afterwards, he heard Lucas keep talking, he often stands at the window and looks towards the northwest direction. I asked him what he was doing, and he said that this is the direction where his good friend lives. Really? Then what else did your father say? Lucas didn't answer right away, instead, he took a sip of the black tea sent by the house elf. All the while, Dumbledore kept looking at him. A few seconds passed before Lucas just looked up at Dumbledore and stared closely at the old man's blue eyes with his own. Before I came, my father just asked me to convey on his behalf that he is doing well, don't read it. Tea spilled from the cup, but Dumbledore didn't seem to notice. He just looked at those blue eyes. TL, 
BTW I checked and the book description of Grindelwald has blue eyes. Gradually, it overlaps with the appearance in memory. Gellert. Dumbledore was taken aback and hastily put down the teacup in his hand. He said with a wry smile, when I get older, I always like to recall the past. What were we talking about just now? Oh yes, friends. Dumbledore waved his wand and the black tea that spilled on the ground disappeared immediately. Seeing Lucas staring at his wand, Dumbledore handed it to him, curious. You can take a closer look. Facing the elder wand close at hand Lucas only paused for a moment before looking away. No, I like my own wand better. I was just wondering why the professor's wand has such a strange shape. Well, the fact is that this wand is called the Elder Wand, and it's very powerful. Dumbledore stared Lucas in the eyes as he said this. Seeing that Lucas' eyes were unwavering. Only then did he shift his gaze to the candies on the table. Speaking of friends, I thought I heard you mention Harry just now. Seeing Lucas nod, Dumbledore said worriedly, that kid Harry had a bad childhood, thank you for being willing to be friends with him. I heard that you met on the Hogwarts Express, can you tell me about how you met? I want to know more about Harry. I saw it coming. After all the back and forth talking, Dumbledore finally got to the point. Lucas smiled slightly, looked at the other party and replied, Of course, it's my honor to help Mr. Dumbledore. Chapter 28, Two Questions from Dumbledore, Ty. So you two met in Diagon Alley. Seeing Lucas nod, Dumbledore sighed. Fate is always so ingenious, it seems that you and Harry are destined. I think so too, sir. The two took a sip of black tea at the same time. It was still Dumbledore who spoke first, and after that, what did you talk about? Before I answer your question, let me ask you a question, Headmaster. Watching that Dumbledore was paying attention, Lucas asked, which do you think is the best of the four houses? Lucas, I can give you a clear answer. The four houses are not good or bad, and there is no priority. Back then, the big four jointly founded this magic school to protect young wizards. The sorting into houses is for more targeted teaching, so that young wizards can use their strengths. Dumbledore said his answer without hesitation and Lucas applauded lightly after listening. It seems that I was right. My answer to Harry was the same as yours. He repeated to Dumbledore what he had said about the video game on the train. Waiting until Lucas finished talking, Dumbledore gave him an appreciative look. What a clever metaphor. It seems that there are many interesting things in the muggle world. I think I need to get into what you're talking about with video games, but I just don't know if it's too late. Lucas smiled and replied, Of course there is time, if you need, I can teach you how to play. As the topic progressed, the atmosphere between the two also became more relaxed. They discussed video games for a few minutes and then Dumbledore asked Lucas a second question. As far as I know, Hogwarts is not the only magic school that sent you an admission letter. Can you tell me why you chose this place? A weak and strange force followed the words and approached Lucas. The moment he noticed it, Lucas' eyes became hollow. Hogwarts is the greatest wizarding school in history, of course I yearn for it. Dumbledore frowned slightly, seemingly dissatisfied with the answer. Lucas, I thought we were friends already, I want to hear the truth. Well, I think you have some understanding of my situation. Over the past few decades, most of my father's subordinates have grown old. But they are still loyal to my father for so many years, and even raised me from a young age. So in recent years, I have also used part of my father's property to start a business. It's not bad, at least I can support my uncles and aunts. But the Ministry of Magic in Germany and France don't seem to trust us, and this time they forced all our shops to close. I can only come to England to make it possible for the elderly uncles and aunts to have a relaxed old age. Lucas looked Dumbledore in the eyes after he finished speaking. Dumbledore was silent for a long time before he said, So, it seems that your life has not been easy. I didn't expect you to bear so much at such a young age. If there is a chance in the future, I will have a good talk with your father about this issue. Looking at Dumbledore who was defending himself, Lucas didn't believe the old man's words in his heart. Dumbledore might go to see his father. For so many years, he has always sent letters to Nurmengard. As for whether they met secretly, that's beyond Lucas' knowledge. Seeming to be aware that he would not be able to learn more from Lucas, Dumbledore was about to see off the guest. It's getting late. I remember you have potions class in the afternoon. Severus has a bad temper. Don't be late. Thank you for your concern, Professor, 
may I visit your office some other day? Dumbledore froze for a moment not expecting that question. Certainly. The first floor of the office is almost the same. The second floor is where Dumbledore rests. Wait until Lucas has visited the principal's office. Sure enough, the sound of the system rang in his ears. Congratulations to the host for completing the exploration achievement, Dumbledore Headmaster's Office, reward, 50 achievement points. Congratulations to the host for triggering a series of achievements, exploring Hogwarts, after completing this achievement, you can get a reward, 1 diamond lottery chance, 500 achievement points. Really? The headmaster's office can trigger a set of achievements. Lucas was secretly delighted, and after saying goodbye to Dumbledore, he walked towards the potions classroom. Headmaster's office. Dumbledore sat in a chair in a daze. On the wall beside him, the portraits of past headmasters are all watching him. Albus, what are you thinking? What do you think of that kid? The portraits looked at each other, and the portrait of Phineas Nigellus Black spoke first. Brilliant, shrewd and an excellent Slytherin. The other portraits followed suit. Cunning. A mouthful of lies. His strength is not bad. He needs to be treated with caution. Dumbledore nodded, looking out the window. Quite proficient in occlumency, but his legilimency is not so good. Worthy of your successor, Gellert. Headmasters, please notify the school portraits and let them pay attention to that child. If there is anything strange, please notify me immediately. Several headmasters in the portraits responded and disappeared into their portraits in a blink of an eye. Outside the potions classroom Hermione paced back and forth. When she noticed Lucas coming her way she greeted him immediately. Hermione? Were you waiting for me? Can't I find you? Here. Looking at the apple in his hand, Lucas looked at her with a puzzled expression. Don't get me wrong, I just saw that you didn't have much to eat at noon, and I just care about it as a friend. Seeing Hermione's uncomfortable look Lucas immediately took a bite of the apple. This apple tastes really good. Hermione's mouth curled into a smile upon hearing these words. Mr. Grindelwald, Miss Granger, do I need to remind you that it's time for class? A low smooth voice was heard from the side which made them turn around and notice Professor Snape's gloomy face looking at them impatiently. Chapter 29, Severus Snape Hermione looked like a frightened rabbit and without waiting for Professor Snape to continue speaking, she ran away. Lucas looked at her back scurrying away like that and chuckled. When he turned his head, Professor Snape was already standing in front of him. Mr. Lucas Grindelwald, the man of the school, do you feel very happy to hear other people's praise? But in my opinion, you are like a pheasant with phoenix feathers on its tail, stupid and arrogant. I very much doubt the sorting hat's decision and think that you should have been sorted into Greyfinder, not Slytherin. Facing the venomous words of the dungeon's bat, Lucas just looked at him with a smile the whole time. He didn't speak until the other party had finished his tirade. Professor, I don't think it's wrong to show my excellence to others. Look, didn't I attract a beautiful lady? I've been looking forward to this moment for a long time. In the youthful years, if there is a childhood sweetheart to accompany each other and spend the long seven years of life together, it would be very beautiful, right? What do you think, Professor? Lucas especially emphasized the words childhood sweetheart. And sure enough, Snape's eyes changed and his expression became heavier. I think your head stuffed with splendens should know that it's time for class. If you don't enter the classroom right this moment, I will have to deduct points from my own house. Okay, Professor, I'm going now. Lucas turned and walked towards the classroom door. If you observe carefully, you can notice that he walked a lot faster than usual. The potions classroom is located in the dungeons, which is the darkest part of the castle. The already dim light is matched with the animal specimens placed along the wall making it look like a horror setting. The young wizards of the two houses did not dare to breathe and they all lowered their heads trying to ignore the terrifying surroundings. This is what Lucas saw when he entered the classroom. Watching Draco sit next to Harry made him raise his eyebrows, and it seemed that the two of them were getting along pretty well. Although Ron Weasley next to Harry had an ugly expression on his face. But what does this have to do with Lucas? Seeing Lucas coming, the little wizards of the two sides greeted him one after another. In the entire classroom, only Theodore not had a free seat next to him. Seeing this, Lucas walked over quickly. Theodore, can I sit here? Of course leader. It was not until he was seated that Lucas realized that at the next table was Neville Longbottom. If he remembers correctly, 
in this class, he will create a moderate accident. Merlin's beard, how can I be so unlucky? Silently complaining, Lucas pulled out his wand and placed it on the table in case he needed it. Bang! The classroom door was suddenly pushed open. Severus Snape walked in like a big black bat with his robes willowing behind him. He waved his wand, closing the windows on one side and the dimly lit classroom became even darker. There will be no foolish wand waving or silly incantations in this class. As such, I don't expect many of you to appreciate the subtle science and exact art that is potion making. Professor Snape's voice was a whisper. But it can always be heard by every student in the classroom. He has a low voice, speaks unhurriedly, with a unique British accent, as if reciting a poem. Professor Snape looked at Lucas with empty eyes. Seeing the wand on the table, he said immediately. Put away your wand Mr. Grindelwald. Lucas had no choice but to do as told. Of course, I don't expect you to really understand the beauty of the slow simmering cauldron emitting white smoke and fragrance. You don't really understand that liquid that flows into people's veins, that magical power that makes people's hearts sway and their minds bewildered. I can teach you how to bottle fame, brew glory and even put a stopper to death. But, first of all, you need to make sure you're not one of those dunderheads I often have the displeasure of teaching. Finishing the opening remarks, Professor Snape picked up the student list. His eyes searched the list and he stopped immediately when he saw one of the names. Harry Potter, our new celebrity. Potter, what do you get if you add powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? The sudden question caught Harry off guard. He hadn't had time to read the potions book so there's no way he would know the answer. Draco wanted to help, but the two were separated by a passage so he couldn't be too blatant. As for Ron? Forget it, he might be even worse than Harry. Sorry sir, I don't know. Snape curled his lips in contempt and even let out a cold snort. Seeing this, Lucas mourned for Harry. If not for his conversation with Professor Snape, perhaps he would just sneer sarcastically. But now he is in a rage. The Slytherin King Snake was merciless in his venom. Head stuffed with ignatherum idiots comparable to trolls. Such words began to echo in the classroom. Lucas couldn't lift his head seeing Harry being sprayed and could only silently wish him good luck in his heart. It feels like Snape won't be able to stop for a while so Lucas gradually began to focus on other things. Unfortunately, just when he was distracted, Professor Snape looked over. The attitude of the students of the two houses towards Lucas just now. Snape could see it clearly from the door. With such charisma, it's no wonder Dumbledore made him keep an eye on him. But... How does Grindelwald dare to distract himself in his class? Professor Snape walked lightly under the gaze of the little wizards, he walked towards Lucas step by step. This scene made Draco and the students of Slytherin very anxious. Chapter 30, The Exploding Cauldron Lucas looked ahead, pretending to be listening carefully. He was actually thinking back to the conversation he had just had with Dumbledore. The confrontation between the two did not seem like anyone had taken the advantage. But Lucas knew in his heart that he had lost. Originally, he thought that Grindelwald could be used to cause the opponent's mind to fall. But unexpectedly, Dumbledore broke free in just a few seconds. On the other hand, the strength of the opponent's legilimency. Even though Lucas has max level acclumency, he still had to deliberately tell some truths, so as to reduce the strength of the opponent's spell. As expected of the greatest white wizard of this century, even in his old age he is still extremely powerful. Lucas never underestimated Dumbledore. But as long as it is a human being, it must bear the decline in function caused by aging. Like Nicholas Flamel. Even if he lived for more than 600 years by relying on the Philosopher's Stone, it wasn't without any weakness, by now, even a gust of wind could break his bones. But in the brief trial with Dumbledore just now, Lucas didn't notice any signs of fading in the opponent's magic power. He even felt that the opponent's magic power was still very active, just like young people. Lucas guessed that this probably had something to do with the phoenix, or it might be that a hundred years is not that old for a strong wizard at the level of Dumbledore. If only Dumbledore hadn't ended up wearing the resurrection stone ring because of his desperation to see his long dead sister. Maybe he could live a few more decades or even a couple centuries. If that's the case, then Voldemort won't have any way of killing him so easily. Lucas sighed. This trial made him expose part of his strength which only made Dumbledore more suspicious. Fortunately. The twinkly old man can only be suspicious, without conclusive evidence. Dumbledore wouldn't do anything to him yet. Even more because of Voldemort. The other party might even come up with good ideas. 
the consequences of this incident were carefully analyzed. Lucas looked again at the newly opened series of achievements. To explore the Hogwarts series of achievements, he needs to explore all the areas that are part of Hogwarts, including the Forbidden Forest. It seems that Draco and Harry will be sent to the Forbidden Forest for some reason later, this is a good chance. It seems that the plan for the night tour should be carried out in advance. Hogwarts is too big and includes so many secret passages. It will take a long time to explore all of them. Just when Lucas was planning his next moves, suddenly, he felt a chill on his back. A flash of light flashed through the originally empty pupils and immediately afterwards, he looked beside him very naturally. What's the matter, Professor Snape? Oh another famous person, Mr. Grindelwald, please answer the question just now. Lucas stood up and replied, powdered root of asphodel and essence of wormwood can be mixed together to make a powerful sleeping potion known as the draft of living dead. A bezoar is a stone taken from the stomach of a goat and has a strong detoxification effect. Monkshood and wolfsbane are the same plant, and they are also referred to as aconite. There was a hint of surprise in Professor Snape's eyes. Probably because he didn't expect Lucas to be able to answer his questions correctly even when his mind was distracted. Humph, it seems that you are smarter than some arrogant guys, the answer is correct. The Slytherin students breathed a sigh of relief. At this moment, Professor Snape's voice rang in their ears again. The rest of you, hurry up and write all these down. The sound of the quills rubbing against parchment immediately spread throughout the classroom. Lucas thought it was over but unexpectedly, Snape asked again, lacewing flies, leeches, fluxweed, not grass. What can you make with those if you also add shredded boom slang snakeskin and bicorn horn powder? Polyjuice potion, professor. Lucas felt a bad premonition as soon as he finished speaking. Snape's voice sounded immediately after he finished his answer. It seems that our Mr. Grindelwald is very studious. He even read the banned books. One point from Slytherin. He didn't know if it was an illusion, but Lucas actually heard a hint of schadenfreude from Snape's voice. Revenge. I wasn't even subtle. This narrow-minded guy must be retaliating because of their previous conversation. However, you at least proved that your head was not stepped on by a troll, so, two points for Slytherin. Professor Snape turned and walked towards the podium. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, Snake King's attention, rewards, 50 achievement points 10 silver sickles. Lucas raised an eyebrow. Professor Snape was stingy with extra points. I didn't expect the rewards for his related achievements to be so stingy as well. At this moment, Professor Snape had already unfurled the curtain hanging on the podium. The steps for making the cure for Boyle's potion are recorded in detail above. Now in groups of two, follow the steps to make the cure for Boyle's potion. Please remember that these potions will be sent to the infirmary for use. If you don't want to delay the treatment because of the potion you made in the future, please complete the potion making seriously and carefully. Professor Snape left the podium after speaking. Lucas glanced at the contents of the potion. Afterwards, the cauldron was set up, and while the initial materials were put in, the snake's fangs were crushed. Theodore, come and boil the tentacled slug. Okay, chief. The two cooperated tacitly and completed each preparation work in an orderly manner. Even Professor Snape, who was paying attention, couldn't help but nod inwardly. Cure for Boyle's potion is very simple to make. Just remember to remove the cauldron from the heat before putting the porcupine quills in. It's such a simple thing, but someone had to forget just this precise step which is the most important. Accompanied by exclamations that sounded in the classroom came the sound of a violent explosion. Green thick smoke floated from one side. When Lucas looked to the side, the acidic potion was already upon him. Chapter 31, Letters from Home, Something Went Wrong. Idiot. Professor Snape's roar echoed through the dungeons. Even the people in the corridor could clearly feel his anger. Snape drew his wand, intending to deal with the splashing potion first. But he did not expect that someone would cast the spell before him. A white light flashed and the potion seemed to be cast in slow motion, slowly staying in midair, making Snape stop in his tracks with surprise in his eyes. The same goes for the little wizards around. Their eyes widened. All this is really thrilling and exciting for them. Everyone's eyes turned to the direction from which the white light came and they saw Lucas pointing his wand at the mess. Evanesco. With a wave of the wand, all the potion in the air and on the ground disappeared without a trace. Seeing this, Lucas also lifted the immobilization spell. 
Does Mr. Grindelwald thinks he has such a high level of magic that he can handle the professor's job? Oh, of course I don't think so, professor. Humph, for the sake of casting the spell in time, Slytherin gets two points. The little snakes heard that Lucas added two more points for their house and their expressions were beaming with happiness. In contrast, the expressions of the little lions are lost and worried. The explosion happened because of one of them. Everyone could already foresee that a lot of points would be deducted this time. Stupid boy, I told you to take the cauldron off the damn fire when adding porcupine quills, why didn't you listen? Ten points from Greyfinder. Hearing that they were deducted another ten points the cubs became even more listless. That's not all, Professor Snape looked back at Harry, who was sitting in the front row. Potter, why didn't you remind him he couldn't put the porcupine quills in? Greyfinder will lose another point because of you. Feeling targeted by Professor Snape, Harry's expression became very aggrieved. But at this time Professor Snape had turned and walked towards Neville. Seeing Neville and Seamus covered in angry red boils all over. The demeanor on Snape became even colder. What are you still doing in a daze? Send the two of them to the infirmary quickly. He said sharply to those around him. Then he looked at the little wizards who were not seriously injured. Injured people go to the infirmary for treatment by themselves. By the way, ask Madame Pomfrey if there is anything that can heal your head stuffed with ignatherum. A group of lion cubs tremblingly walked out of the dungeons. Many people were injured this time and Snape, as a professor, followed them to the infirmary. It wasn't until he was gone for a long time that the rest of the classroom breathed a sigh of relief. Harry turned to Lucas and said, Thank you so much Lucas, if it weren't for you, I might have gone to the infirmary just now. Other cubs who were not injured also expressed their gratitude. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, Lion's Friendship, Reward, 100 Achievement Points Greyfinder Academy Style Scarf. Snort. A cold snort suddenly came from beside Harry. Seeing Ron's dissatisfied expression, Draco immediately stood up. Weasley, what do you mean, is it Lucas' fault for saving you? I didn't say I needed his help. Draco has tolerated the stupid redhead for a long time and couldn't hold it back anymore. Oh Lucas really shouldn't have saved you, he should have let the potion fall on you, preferably on your mouth, so you wouldn't say such nasty words all the time. In a fight of words, as a proud pure-blood family, the Malfoy family has never lost. After all, Draco has been taught politics and how to use his words in a fight by his father since he was a child. Ron blushed, but didn't know how to respond. In the end, he could only stand up and glare at the other party. Harry felt a headache when he was caught between the two of them. At the same time, he has some complaints about his good friend Ron in his heart. This, by any measure, was entirely Ron's fault. The other lion cubs thought the same way. Although their Greyfinder Academy has always had conflicts with Slytherin, that doesn't mean they are an ungrateful bunch so Ron's performance displeased everyone. Lucas, who had a panoramic view of everyone's expressions, decided to interfere before someone decided to escalate the fight. Students, a friendly reminder that Professor Snape might be back soon, so let's make the potion quickly. The originally quiet classroom immediately became lively. Seeing everyone frantically looking after their cauldrons, Lucas smiled and filled his own finished potion into the crystal bottle. As for Ron Weasley? Who cares about him? Lucas doesn't waste his time talking with people he doesn't know well. Soon, Professor Snape came back to the classroom. Looking at the cure for Boyle's potion that Lucas and Theodore made, he nodded in satisfaction, although the formula is simple, the quality of the potion is excellent. Two points for Slytherin. As soon as the horrible potions class was over, the little wizards scrambled to leave the classroom. There were even some Slytherin snakes among them. First-year classes at Hogwarts are very relaxing, there are only two or three classes a day. With the end of the potions class, the little wizards also completed their first day of study. Right after dinner, Lucas returned to the dormitory, looking at the wand on the table with a questioning expression. Come over. With one command, the wand seemed to cut through the void and it appeared in Lucas' palm right away. Such a strange ability was discovered in Potion's class. At that time, he was faced with the failed Potion flying at his face and it was too late for Lucas to draw his wand. Just when he was about to cast a spell without a wand, the wand suddenly appeared in his hand. It seems to be because the core of the wand is his hair which makes the wand also have a part of his ability to cross the void. This is really good, with this I don't have to be wary of other people's disarming spells in the future. Getting his stuff ready for a night out, 
Lucas planned to take advantage of the night to explore the castle. But right before he could leave, Hestia flew in with a letter in her mouth. In fact, Lucas has always been curious about where Hestia flew into the basement from. But now is obviously not the time to explore that mystery. The letter was from Vinder Rosier. Seeing the contents of the letter, Lucas' expression turned serious immediately. It seems there were serious problems. Abernathy is seriously injured. After determining the spatial coordinates of the manor, Lucas immediately tore open the void and disappeared from the dormitory. Hogwarts Anti-Apparition Ward? What is that? Chapter 32, The Green Light That Illuminates the Night Sky Wiltshire, Grindelwald Estate A dozen members of the Alliance came to the hall, waiting for Lucas to return. With Vinder Rosier standing at the forefront. She stared intently at the portrait of Gellert Grindelwald on the wall. Aunt Vinda, what the hell happened? Along with Lucas' voice, a void rift appeared in the hall. Master. Seeing everyone bowing to him Lucas nodded indifferently, then looked at Vinda beside him. Two hours ago, people from the German Ministry of Magic went to Nurmengard, claiming to take over the castle. Abernathy received the news and led people to rush there immediately, but was attacked by an aura on the way, Abernathy was seriously injured, and some members were arrested. Lucas sat in the main seat and listened quietly to the report. Even after hearing the news of Abernathy's serious injury, there was not the slightest fluctuation in his eyes. Then what? Our supporters arrived, and the Aurors were defeated and retreated. Nurmengard Castle is safe and sound, and it is still under our control. That's good then. The letter says someone betrayed Abernathy. Who? Vinda clapped her hands and Pine Kara walked in with an old man. Master Lucas. Nice to see you again, Mr. Pine. Lucas greeted the visitor. Then he looked at the old man in Pine's hand. Bill Hicks. When he heard Lucas call out his name, Bill looked at him tremblingly, Lucas, they threatened my family, and I was confused. Lucas, please give me another chance for your father's sake. Lucas squatted in front of Bill, looked at his old face and said. Uncle Hicks, I remember you were among those who followed my father in 1943, right? You have suffered a lot in the past few decades. Looking at his gentle expression, Hicks let out a sigh of relief, and just as he was about to speak, he felt a wand pointing to his forehead. So, please take a good rest, Avada Kedavra. The full level killing curse erupted with a dazzling green light. When the people in the hall came back to their senses, they saw that Bill Hicks' eyes were empty, and his skin instantly turned grey and white. The acolytes in the hall shuddered subconsciously. Their eyes turned to Lucas and the eleven-year-old young master looked indifferent. It seemed that to him, using the unforgivable curse to kill someone was just a trivial matter. Carry the body down and bury it properly. As soon as Lucas turned around, he saw Vinda's worried face. Don't worry, I'm fine. But your trace. It's okay, someone will take care of it for me. Going back to his seat, he looked at Pine Caro standing aside. Lucas asked, anything else? Master, we have inquired about some news. It is said that people from the German Ministry of Magic will come to England in a while, and the target may be you. Do you know the time? It hasn't been confirmed yet, but if you follow the regular interview process, you need to wait until Halloween at the least. Lucas raised his right hand and stroked his chin and after a while, a smile appeared on his face. Don't stop them, just let them come, but before that, I will give them a big gift. Lucas took another look at Pine Caro. You don't want to go back. Stay in England, Aunt Vinda will take you to meet someone later, and he will arrange your next job. Pine nodded happily. Then Lucas waited until everyone walked out of the room with only himself and Vinda remaining in the hall. Aunt Vinda, how is the preparation over there? Don't worry, someone has already brought your coordinates back with the port Kayat, and it should be ready by now. Lucas closed his eyes immediately after hearing this. The spiritual power went deep into the void, and soon found his own space mark found it. He took Vinda's hand, and the two of them stepped into the void in front of them and disappeared. At the same time, the Ministry of Magic's Department of Misuse of Magic Office welcomes a rare visitor. When this person left the place, all records of Lucas Trace had disappeared. Fargo Magic Hospital, Austria. Lucas shows up beside the hospital bed with Vinda. Upon seeing Abernathy's pale face, Lucas couldn't help but blame himself. Hey, it's none of your fault Lucas it's my own carelessness. Nonsense, if I hadn't asked you to stay, you wouldn't have been injured so badly. 
Hearing this, Abernathy chuckled a little. Looking into Lucas' red eyes, he teased. No way, does our master Lucas want to cry like a child? Lucas turned his head, stop talking nonsense, I won't. After a moment of silence, he said again, Uncle Abernathy, I will avenge you. Well, I believe in you, don't worry, my old bones can still hold on, I'm still waiting for Gellert and you to lead us to true freedom. The two chatted for a short time until Abernathy fell asleep. Seeing the other party lying on the hospital bed still frowning tightly. Lucas said softly, Aunt Vinda, when Uncle Abernathy's injury recovers, he will be taken to England, and more staff will be arranged at my father's place. She nodded and followed Lucas out of the ward. The basement of Nurmengard Castle. Several captured Aurors are being held here. Lucas entered the basement wearing a black robe. His appearance was covered by a white hood, and others could only see his delicate chin. Bastard, scum, you magical thugs, kill me if you have the ability. Let go of me, you villains. Several Aurors were brought before Lucas. Seeing his presence at this time, the curses of the Aurors became even harsher. But before they could say a few more words, they saw a delicate palm protruding from the robe. Imperial. Chapter 33, The Ministry of Magic is Under Attack. German Ministry of Magic, the administrative body of the German magical community. The office is located in a building in the center of Berlin under the influence of the Muggle repelling charm. It has not been discovered so far. At midnight, the Ministry of Magic was still brightly lit. But compared to the hustle and bustle of the day, at this time, it was pretty much deserted in comparison. Only countless enchanted letters shuttled through the building. The wizard in charge of night duty leaned back on the chair and slacked off. Slap. Slap. There was a sound of footsteps in the silent hall which woke him up and made him look towards the entrance in a hurry. What he saw were three aurors with injuries all over their bodies walking towards him supporting each other. Ronald, Mike, you are not. Oh Charles, thank goodness for coming to help, Mike is badly hurt. Ronald fell to the ground as soon as he finished speaking. It could be seen that he himself was seriously injured as well. Charles, the wizard in charge, ran forward immediately, not forgetting to inform his superiors. Imperial. As soon as Charles approached, Ronald who was lying on the ground raised his wand to him. Until the wizard on duty was completely controlled by the imperious curse. The three people on the ground stood up. At the same time, distortions of space appeared in many streets and alleys of Berlin. To the common people, this may be paranormal. But if a wizard sees it, he can immediately guess that someone is using port keys. In a dark alley in Berlin. Lucas, everyone is here. Vinda Rosier approached the figure in front and whispered in its ear. Really, let's go then. Looking at the towering buildings in the distance. Lucas, dressed in black, stepped forward. When he walked out of the dark alley. There are already dozens of acolytes outside waiting for him. Everyone followed behind Lucas without saying a word. It can be seen from the clenched wands in their hands and the angry expressions. Tonight, Berlin is not destined to be peaceful. German Ministry of Magic Charles took the three injured Aurors to the infirmary on the eighth floor. At this time, the person in charge of the Aura office who got the news also rushed from home. Ronald, how did you come back? It was Mike. He brought a portkea with him before he left. We used the portkea to escape. The head of the Aurors is a middle-aged wizard in his forties. He touched his bald head, his eyes full of vigilance and doubt. Ronald, you should know the rules, hand in the wand, and I will return it to you after we are sure that you are not under control. Of course, we'd love to. Ronald handed over the wand to the other party without hesitation. He even offered to help get Mike's wand. As for the other companion, he handed over his wand, which was also quite cooperative. The head aura breathed a sigh of relief and his tense body also relaxed. But he didn't know that Charles behind him had already aimed his wand at himself. Avada Kedavra. A green light flashed and the hard-working head of the Aurors for twenty years would never have guessed. He didn't die in a battle to arrest dark wizards, but instead, he died at the hands of his own people. At the same time an Auror who followed the person in charge also died at Ronald's hands. Mike, don't pretend to be dead, get up and work. Mike who was seriously injured and unconscious, turned over immediately. He tore off a few hairs from the person in charge and threw them into the polyjuice potion he had prepared. Pinching his nose to suppress the nausea, he took two sips. Mike's appearance quickly changed into that of the other party. Get ready for action. 
or office. The acolytes who were captured were temporarily held in the cells here. A few Aurors were playing wizard chess and discussing the ambush earlier in the day. Hey guys, do you guys think I'm going to get an award tomorrow? Why? Oh you don't even know that I injured Abernathy, the famous core member of the Alliance. One Auror looked at the others triumphantly. Abernathy is still well known in most European countries. The others looked at him enviously and just when they were about to say some flowery words to congratulate him they saw their boss leading Ronald and the others into the office. Director. Several Aurors got up immediately and carefully covered the wizard chess. Well, how are those Grindelwald lackeys? Don't worry, everything is fine, they have been quiet the whole time. The person in charge came in front of several people and said, thanks to you, especially you. I heard it just now. I will never forget the credit for being able to injure Abernathy. The expressions of several Aurors immediately became excited. Just when they are happy and excited. A few green lights flashed in front of their eyes. The last sentence heard by everyone was, Avada Kedavra. After freeing the imprisoned acolytes, Ronald took out a port Kaet and he signaled for them to leave quickly. As for Ronald and the others, Lucas also assigned another task. Outside the German Ministry of Magic. Lucas stood on top of a residential building and stared at the brightly lit building in front of him. At this moment, only Vinda was with him. Suddenly, the space behind the two became distorted and all the freed prisoners showed up on the roof. Welcome back, uncles. Master Lucas. Lucas nodded, I'm sorry for what you went through, just rest for a while, and we'll go home later. Seeing all the people rescued, Lucas and Vinda exchanged glances. The two took out their wands at the same time, and said to the building of the Ministry of Magic, Pestis Incendium. Crimson fiend fire spewed from the tip of their wands. The flames set the building of the German Ministry of Magic ablaze with Lucas full rage. At the same time, dozens of fire snakes also shot out around the Ministry of Magic building. Chapter 34, The Ministry of Magic in the Midst of the Raging Flames The first thing fiend fire destroyed was the muggle repelling charm that had been cast on the building's surface. Immediately afterwards, the crimson flames began to spread upward from the ignition point. After a while, dozens of fiery flames gathered in one place and turned into a gigantic flame dragon. Raising its head high the dragon roared into the sky and started to gradually climb up the outside of the building. Inside the building the wizards on duty in various departments finally noticed something strange going on outside. Aguamenti. Facing the raging fire, the first reaction of the wizards was to put out the fire with a flick of their wands. But it was a curse that was almost invincible. The stream of water summoned now turned into steam before it even got close to the flame. This is fiend fire, it cannot be extinguished, everyone run. With a loud shout, the German Ministry of Magic fell into chaos. In the Ministry of Magic of any country, there are only so many powerful wizards, such as elite orators. As for other adult wizards, they couldn't even cast an effective shield charm. Facing fiend fire, these wizards are no different from the common people. In the midst of chaos, some wizards began to apparate and the ones who can't apparate are begging others to take them away. Cries, roars, and curses resounded throughout the Ministry of Magic. Right at this time, under the control of the Imperious Curse, Ronald and the others walked through all the floors of the Ministry of Magic. Pestis Incendium The fiend fire cast by several people began to rage inside the building. The Ministry of Magic's protective spell was easily destroyed by the attack from within. Ronald looked at fiend fire in front of him with a strange smile. He then threw away the wand in his hand, leaving the fiend fire completely out of his control, allowing it to consume everything in its path. The others did the same as him and when all this was done the imperious curse on them was also lifted. Facing the raging fire, the Aurors who had just regained their freedom shouted desperately, No, don't. The ruthless flames devoured them, and then turned into a flame phoenix and flew towards the top floor. It's so beautiful. For people in Berlin, tonight should be unforgettable forever. Lucas looked at the fire phoenix and fire dragon from the roof opposite to the ministry and said softly. At this moment, the building was like a gigantic torch, lighting up the whole of Berlin. It's on fire, put out the fire. Why is there an extra building here suddenly? Oh God, what the hell, I'm calling the fire department, dot. This must be an alien base. They must have used some method to keep us from seeing it. Hearing the shouts from the street, Lucas took Vinda away from view. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, Revenge Carnival, Reward, 500 Achievement Points. Lucas raised his brows lightly, 
he was quite satisfied with what he got tonight. Accompanied by a cracking sound. Their figures disappeared from the building's roof. A few hours later, in front of the ruins of the Ministry of Magic. The Minister of the German Ministry of Magic said through gritted teeth. Assholes, it must have been done by those crazy Alliance members. The answer is obvious. After all, their orders had been to Nurmengard just this afternoon. They also achieved good results. It's just that everyone didn't expect the opponent's revenge to come so quickly. Hurry up and negotiate with the British Ministry of Magic. We must capture that damned little beast and put it in prison. The director of the International Affairs Department nodded with a gloomy expression. England, Wiltshire. Lucas and Vinda returned to the manor across the space. After two long-distance crossings, Lucas found that his magic power seemed to have increased a bit. Aunt Vinda, strengthen the protection of the manor during this period, and arrange for Uncle Abernathy to come to England to recuperate as soon as possible. Don't worry, leave it to me, but you. You mean they might send people to Hogwarts to catch me? Vinda frowned slightly and said, after tonight, those people may become even crazier, so be careful. It's fine, I'll be safe at Hogwarts, after all, there is the greatest white wizard of this century living there. He said somewhat jokingly, then Lucas tore through the void and returned to his dormitory. When Hestia saw him come back, she cried happily a few times. Girl, be quiet, I'm going to prepare for the aftermath, and I'll play with you when I come back, okay? Soothing Hestia, Lucas adjusted his wizard robes. Looking at the wand he had snatched in his hand, he immediately snapped it off and threw it into the void. I'm afraid that might not be enough. Lucas thought for a while, picked up a lamp and walked out of the dormitory. Hogwarts Castle at night looked extremely gloomy. The portraits on the wall were all sleeping at this time, making the place eerily silent. There was a sound of footsteps. The dim light of his lamp appeared from the end of the corridor, disturbing the resting of the portraits on the walls. Hey, turn off your lights, it's bad manners to disturb someone's sleep. Oh, sorry sir, I'm leaving right away. Lucas said apologetically to the portrait on the wall. Along the way, he apologized to the portraits as he walked. Why is he doing this? Naturally, it's for these portraits to see him so he can gain an alibi. If Lucas guessed right. These portraits are actually equivalent to the cameras in Hogwarts. As the property of Hogwarts Castle, they must obey the headmaster's orders and report what they see to him. Dumbledore probably learned what happened in the castle through these portraits, certainly. The method of dodging these portraits is also very simple. Disillusionment spells or invisibility cloaks will do. Oh, shit, put out the lamp in your hand, kid. Sorry. The apology came again. Lucas walked farther and farther, and soon came to the library. Oh oh oh, let me see who this is. It turned out to be Mr. Grindelwald who earned a lot of house points today. What? Does Mr. Grindelwald think he is so great? so he plans to take a thrilling night tour like those stupid lions. A low, monotonous tone came from behind. The corners of Lucas' mouth rose, and then he turned to look at the person coming. Professor Snape, are you still awake at this late hour of the night? Chapter 35, The Poor Threatened Quirrell Seeing that Lucas wasn't afraid of himself at all, Professor Snape wondered if his dignity had diminished recently. Mr. Grindelwald, as the head of the first-year Slytherins, you should know better how to protect yourself. At this moment, it's time to turn off the lights and go to sleep. If you wander in the corridors, you will only cause unnecessary trouble for yourself. Oh Merlin, Professor, are you concerned about me? Lucas can swear that after he said those words, the temperature around Professor Snape dropped even lower. Oh. Snape sneered, losing his patience. For Snape who always had a cold, expressionless face, the sudden sneer was indeed scary. Mr. Grindelwald, go back to your dormitory immediately, or I will have to deduct 100 points from my house because of your night tour. Well. Lucas didn't expect Professor Snape to be so ruthless. He immediately said good night to the other party, and then he left the scene quickly. Mr. Grindelwald, detention at my office after class tomorrow. This is your punishment for going out at night without permission. Understood Professor. Lucas walked a long way before stopping. Of course he won't just go back so easily. He found a corner without any painting and cast the disillusionment charm on himself. Returning to the hallway where Snape had just appeared he saw that the other party had not left yet. Come out Quirrell. Just as Snape finished speaking, a series of footsteps sounded in the empty corridor. 
S. Professor Snape, Professor, haven't you gone to rest yet? Quirrell had a timid look on his face and was very careful when speaking. But Lucas knew that everything this guy was showing was just a disguise. The other party was a ruthless person who dared to let Voldemort live on the back of his head. Professor Quirrell, why are you still awake at this late hour? I, I couldn't sleep, so I, I went out for a walk. Are you sure that's all you were doing? Professor Snape grabbed his shoulder and pressed him against the corridor wall. Quirinus Quirrell, there may be some misunderstanding between you and me, I am not your enemy. S. Snape, I don't understand what you are talking about. No, you should understand in your heart. Snape had a tone that said he had already seen through him. As if trying to induce Quirrell to say something. Quirrell wasn't stupid, though. On the contrary, he who graduated from Ravenclaw can be considered quite smart. Just when Quirrell shook his head in denial. From the direction of the library, Filch, the caretaker, could be heard cursing. Snape let go of him and walked over, frowning. Seeing the cold head of Slytherin go away, Quirrell heaved a sigh of relief and changed his cowardly appearance from just now. As everyone knows. His appearance at the moment is seen by the portraits in the corridor. This includes Lucas as well. Oh, poor little Quirrell. It probably didn't occur to him that his every move was already under Dumbledore's surveillance. Waiting until Quirrell was gone, Lucas continued with the purpose of this trip. Pushing open the door of the library. It's very quiet inside at the moment. It is unknown who lured Filch and Snape away. But thanks to whoever it was, Lucas can rest assured to read books here. Lumos. The wand tip lights up. Lucas identified the direction and walked quickly to the restricted area. As for the portraits inside the library who can see him? It doesn't matter. He had meant for them to see. Dumbledore probably couldn't think of that. Lucas came to the restricted area to find books about Animagus. Looking at the contents of the book word by word, Lucas soon fell into an ocean of knowledge. At this time, the door of the restricted area was pushed open again and the Weasley twins ran in one after the other. Hey George, look there's a light over there. It can't be that guy Filch waiting for us. Obviously it's not possible, I think the other side should be the same as us. Fred finished. The twins smiled in unison and tiptoed toward the light. The two obviously intended to scare the other person. Got you. The twins who were meant to scare others. Looking at the figure that suddenly disappeared in front of their eyes, they froze in place for a moment. Before they could react, a low, gloomy voice came from behind. Excuse me, what's the matter with you? Coincidentally, Mrs. Norris' cry came at the same time and the twins felt cold all over and shivered in fright. Seeing that the two were about to cry out, Lucas hurried forward and covered their mouths. If you don't want to be caught by Filch, keep quiet. Filch's footsteps could be heard from the door. Lucas swung his wand and cast the disillusionment charm on the three of them. Filch is a squib. So to a certain extent he hated young wizards very much. And he hates little wizards who don't study hard and waste their talents even more. So whenever he caught someone during a night tour, it usually didn't end well. Filch had a cat and named it Mrs. Norris who is his emotional sustenance. At the same time, the cat's nose is also very good. Hey, Mrs. Norris, is anyone here? Filch came in with the lamp in hand and walked carefully through each bookshelf. He even passed back and forth in front of the three of them. The twins were no longer afraid now, on the contrary, seeing that Filch couldn't see themselves, they immediately turned on each other. Boom. After a quarter of an hour the doors to the restricted section were closed again. The three people who were frozen like statues finally were relieved and the spell was lifted. Looking at the twins beside him, a gleam flashed in Lucas' eyes. It's really hard to find all the hidden places in the castle. If you ask who are the students who know Hogwarts Castle the best, the Weasley twins are undoubtedly the first choice. And the two of them also had an item comparable to an artifact in their hands. The Marauder's Map. If you have the Marauder's map, plus the help of the two of them. I believe that the series of achievements in exploring Hogwarts will be completed sooner than expected. Chapter 36, Twins Friendship The Weasley Twins Have a life as gorgeous as fireworks. They are like the ones in school who are always mischievous but loved by all the teachers and classmates. They are brilliant. Although their talent is only used in pranks. They are also the only students who can get peeves to salute. They are also the only ones who bring joy to the school in the darkness of the future. Looking at the twins in front, laughing and looking at him. I'm afraid they don't expect that one day in the future, 
the two who are inseparable will be separated. This is something no one has thought of. Even in Molly Weasley's nightmares, her two sons were never separated. Seeing the blonde boy in front staring at them, the twins looked at each other and asked in unison, What's the matter with you? Little chief of Slytherin. It's nothing, I suddenly thought of something. Lucas shook his head and said. Nice to meet you, the famous Weasley twins, my name is Lucas Grindelwald. Lucas introduced himself very formally, he even used standard aristocratic etiquette. The twins smiled at each other and bowed slowly to salute. Fred Weasley. George Weasley. Nice to meet you, Mr. Grindelwald. They know each other so well that it seems like they share a brain. Going back to their normal self, the two held Lucas' shoulders from left and right each and asked. Little Chief, what was your spell just now? It looks cool. Disillusionment charm, do you want to learn it? I can teach it to you. Really? Seeing Lucas nod, the twins' expressions became very excited. Even if you think about it with your feet, you can understand it. The twins after they have learned the disillusionment charm will be even more restless at night. Seeing the twins staring at him eagerly, Lucas was going to remind the two of them to pay attention to where they were at the moment. A library is not a good place to learn charms. Just at this time, Filch's voice came again from outside the gates of the restricted section. Professor Snape, I'm pretty sure those two boys are in there, but I can't spot them. Filch, you've said it many times, don't worry, I'll take care of these two little mice. Snape's deep voice came and Lucas saw the twins visibly stiffen. Before casting the disillusionment charm again, he gave the twins a look. The two understood, and followed him cautiously towards the door. Lucas slowed down, afraid of making unnecessary noise. Seeing that the door is close at hand the twins' wizard robes accidentally brushed against the door. In the silent library, this sound became very obvious. Hominum revelio. Finite incantatum. Snape swung his wand towards the door. A white light glowed from the top. The figures of the three suddenly appeared at the door. Fortunately, none of them are fools. When the spell sounded, the three of them had already run out of the gate, leaving only Snape behind. Lucas took the twins to the seventh floor of the castle and stopped by the wall with the tapestry of Barnabas the Barmy teaching ballet to a group of trolls. Watching Lucas walk back and forth in front of the tapestry the twins looked puzzled. Soon, the two found a wooden door on the wall opposite the tapestry. Under their stunned gaze, Lucas stepped forward and opened the door, come on, hurry up, dot. Oh. This is really amazing. I didn't expect Hogwarts to have such a strange place. The twins entered the room. There are human-shaped wooden targets everywhere, just like a spell practice room. Little Chief, what exactly is this place? Lucas didn't hold back, and explained to the two with a smile. This is called the Room of Requirements. Just like I did just now. Just think about the room you need in your mind, and then walk back and forth three times in front of the tapestry, and the door of the corresponding room will appear. The room of requirement. The twins said in unison. The two looked at each other. The unique tacit understanding of the twins allowed them to immediately understand each other's thoughts. Oh. If I need a room full of prank props. Not waiting for Lucas to nod. Fred on the side slapped his younger brother George. Hey. Why don't you want a room full of galleons? Seeing that the two of them planned to go out to experiment immediately. Lucas quickly stopped the two of them. Don't dream, the things created by the room cannot be taken out, unless the items are also from the outside world. The twins suddenly lost interest in exploring. But upon hearing that Lucas was going to teach them the disillusionment charm the two regained their spirits. Watching the twins practice the disillusionment spell by themselves, Lucas also took the time to glance at the system. He heard several beeps just now. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, explore the library, get rewards, 100 achievement points gadding with ghouls. Congratulations to the host for a new achievement, the friendship of the Weasley twins, rewards, 50 achievement points prank candy. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, explore the room of requirements, reward, 200 achievement points. Lucas calculated carefully using his fingers. He got a total of 850 achievement points tonight. The harvest is rich and the results are gratifying. Watching the twins still practicing, Lucas hands the two prank candies he just got from the rewards. Immediately afterwards the roar of lions and elephants resounded in the room. Amidst the laughter, the friendship between the three became deeper. Little Chief, 
in order to thank you for your generosity, we are going to give you a special gift. It's a very, very miraculous gift, little chief, don't be too surprised when the time comes. Before parting, the twins said mysteriously. Watching the two cast the disillusionment spell and leave, Lucas also returned to the Slytherin common room. It has to be said. The talent of the twins is really good, the disillusionment spell is quite advanced and the two were able to barely display it in such a short period of time. The next day, Lucas walked into the great hall with a tired expression on his face. He felt the need to prepare some pepper-up potions. He didn't go to pull Ravenclaw's long table, because every morning the head of the great has to make arrangements for the day. At this time, a flock of owls flew from outside, with most of them having a copy of the Daily Prophet in their talons. Lucas was looking forward to the news, wanting to see if there would be a report of his activities from last night. Chapter 37, The Turbulent Wizarding World Lucas took the Daily Prophet from Hestia's claw. He picked up a piece of jerky from the table and fed it to her. What happened last night? Sure enough, the Daily Prophet has published it, and it's even in the headlines. Looking at the German Minister of Magic cursing angrily in the newspaper Lucas sneered inwardly. Oh Merlin, read the newspaper quickly, the German Ministry of Magic has been attacked by mobs. The little wizard who saw the newspaper exclaimed and the Great Hall immediately became lively. Looking at the ruins of the German Ministry of Magic in the newspaper, there were exclamations from every corner of the Great Hall. Reporters interviewed Minister Orwell who insisted the attack was carried out by acolytes led by Grindelwald. Everyone knows that Grindelwald is now imprisoned in Nurmengard Castle's prison. Wizards in Germany believe that Minister Orwell just wants to put the blame on the Alliance. After all, everyone knows that Minister Orwell's big brother died at the hands of Gellert Grindelwald. The little wizard of Ravenclaw finished reading the contents of the newspaper aloud and everyone in the place turned their eyes to the Slytherin table. Lucas just kept eating gracefully. He also saw what was in the newspaper and was a bit surprised, he didn't expect that old guy Orwell to have such a relationship with him. The students in the Great Hall just took a brief look out of curiosity. They don't think that Lucas has the ability to go to Berlin in the middle of the night and make such a scene. Although most people no longer pay attention to him, there was still Dumbledore who never took his eyes off Lucas. When he received the message this morning, the first thing he did was asking the portraits of previous headmasters about Lucas and he learned that the other party was on a night tour of the castle last night. Dumbledore was relieved but still doubtful, according to the information he received, Abernathy was seriously injured yesterday afternoon. Vinder Rosier has been in Wiltshire and Lucas didn't leave school. Dumbledore couldn't think of anyone else who could call the Alliance together. Severus, I heard a lot of interesting things happened in the castle last night. Humph, it's just some idiot who got his head trampled by a troll looking for something exciting. The two had a seemingly simple conversation, but the meaning of their words were hiding a message. Sure Snape met Lucas last night. Dumbledore dismissed his suspicions for the time being. Although he didn't think anyone could sneak into Hogwarts and take Lucas out. But it's better to be careful. Severus, sometimes you should be more lenient with the students. It is understandable that they are curious when they just came to Hogwarts. Humph. Snape swallowed the last mouthful of food, stood up and prepared to leave. Severus, if you have time, please take some potions for teeth healing to my office, my teeth are not feeling well lately. If you eat sweets without restraint, next time it will not be your teeth that will be damaged, but your brain, headmaster. After Snape finished speaking, he walked out through the small door on the side. In fact, both of them understood that the potion and the toothache were just a cover. Since it cannot be confirmed that what happened last night was done by the Alliance. Then Dumbledore had to wonder if it was another terrorist gang. And Severus Snape, had been one of those guys. Coincidentally, the reporter from the Daily Prophet had the same thoughts as Dumbledore. Instead of just believing that the Alliance did it. It is better to believe that it is the revenge of the Death Eaters. After all, Voldemort had only disappeared for more than ten years. At the beginning, most of his followers were in their prime of life. There are even a considerable number of people who have escaped the trial of the Wizarding Law. Hearing the name Death Eaters the faces of the little wizards present became somewhat afraid. Even the little snakes of Slytherin. Oh Merlin, look at the next news, there are still people breaking into Gringotts, what happened to the Wizarding World? What are the Aurors from the Ministry of Magic doing? Seeing how turbulent the Wizarding World is at the moment. It left the younger students feeling a little scared. When Harry heard that Gringotts had been robbed, he immediately grabbed the newspaper. Vault 713, this is where Hagrid and I went to. 
Reading what's in the newspaper, Harry thought he had discovered something very remarkable. He put away the newspaper and planned to show it to Draco Malfoy later. Back at Slytherin's long table, Lucas finished the coffee in his cup, looked at the restless little snakes and said. Next, I will announce two things. You have also seen the current situation. For your safety, before the Christmas holiday, learn at least one defensive spell. In addition, several of our chiefs have discussed that on the upcoming Halloween, we are going to hold a Halloween ball in the common room. Those who want to participate, please prepare costumes as soon as possible. Upon hearing what he said, the little snakes looked very excited. Cool, thanks chief for thinking about us. Oh, the Halloween ball, that's a great opportunity. Hearing Blaze Zabani's words, the people present nodded unconsciously. For Slytherin students who have attended various banquets since childhood. A ball, in addition to relaxing, is also a good opportunity to improve or create new connections. Lucas wasn't the same as them. With his capacity, there is no need to think about these things at all. Seeing that Draco also looked excited. Lucas asked suspiciously, given the status of your Malfoy family in the British wizarding world, you shouldn't need to deliberately make friends with others, right? What are you talking about? I'm just excited about the flying lessons I'm waiting for, and I have an appointment with Harry to try it out. Oh shit. This brat. It was a total waste of his Slytherin education. Also don't know if it's good or bad to have Draco and Harry as friends. Lucas only recently found out that this boy seems to have a tendency to develop into a stupid Greyfinder. Soon, breakfast was over and Lucas led the freshmen to the lawn outside the castle. Flying class was a big class taught to the four houses together. Seeing Lucas coming towards her, Hermione immediately waved her hand, Lucas, this way. Chapter 38, Brash Neville and a Fight Flying Lessons A compulsory course for wizards traveling long distances. Although there are more convenient methods such as apparition, the flu network, port keys, and the night bus. But it's not known if it is to maintain tradition or just for Quidditch, but every little wizard must learn to ride a broom. Lucas didn't think it was useful at all. It's not fast enough and there is no cover for rainy or snowy days, but seeing how excited the others were, he could only stand in line. The professor of the flight class is named Rolanda Hooch. Professor Hooch is an expert on broom flying and quid ditch. She has short grey hair and yellow hawk-like eyes. The first flight lesson is starting now, what are you waiting for, everyone stand on the left side of your brooms. Waiting until everyone is on their positions, Professor Hooch went on to say, now stretch out your right hand and then say to the broom, up. She had just finished speaking, and the word up could be heard everywhere as most kids were really excited to start flying. Both Harry and Draco have excellent flying talents. The two got their broom to respond almost at the same time. Ron Weasley on the side was a little slower. He, who claimed to have always played Quidditch before school, is not as good as Harry, who was exposed to brooms for the first time. When he finally got his broom to react it even smacked him in the face which embarrassed him greatly. Up, up. Hermione watched the broom rolling on the ground, and seeing that it didn't want to get up was making her upset. She suddenly heard laughter from the side. Not turning her head, she rolled her eyes silently. Mr. Lucas, it is very rude of you to mock a lady who is struggling like this. Beautiful lady, I didn't mean to laugh at you, I just laughed at your naughty broom. Humph, it seems like your broom is still on the ground. Glancing at the broom that Lucas had left on the ground, Hermione's eyes were a little smug. Although her flying talent seems to be poor, at least she could get the broom moving a bit. Lucas saw through her mind at a glance, so he looked at the broom on the ground and said softly, up, and the broom took off immediately. And that's not all, but the broom seems to have turned into a puppy wagging its tail. How do you feel now, beautiful Miss Hermione? Humph. About half an hour passed and most students finally completed their first preparations. Everyone straddled their broom waiting for Professor Hooch's next instruction. Very well, relax. When you hear the whistle, you will kick the ground hard, hold on to the broom, and hover in the air first. Professor Hooch didn't get to finish her sentence and Neville Longbottom had already floated into the air. Fear and nervousness made his magic power extremely unstable. Seeing this, Professor Hooch quickly comforted him, Mr. Longbottom, calm down, you. Whoosh. Before finishing speaking again, Neville's broom completely lost control. There were exclamations on the lawn. Lucas propped up his broom and looked at Neville Longbottom who was in the air. Speaking of Neville, 
this reckless Mr. Longbottom with a poor memory will make a great achievement in the future. Being recognized by Greyfinder's sword. At least it shows that this coward has made great progress in the future. Thinking about Greyfinder's sword, Lucas had another headache. He has no idea about how to complete the series of achievements of collecting the relics of the Big Four. Although he knows where these things are. But he couldn't find a way to dispose of Voldemort's soul fragments and use them even if he got them. Just when he was in a trance. Suddenly, screams came from beside him and he saw Longbottom being hung on the spear of the Castle Stone Man. It was about 80 feet above the ground at this point. Merlin, Neville's life may be in danger if he falls. Tear. Classmate Neville's wizard robe was torn from one side. Lucas looked at Miss Hermione Crowmouth Granger beside him. Didn't expect her to have such a skill. Ah. I don't know if it's the butterfly effect. But Neville had nothing to slow down his fall this time. Seeing that he was about to be smashed to paste, Lucas summoned his wand and pointed at him, Arresto Momentum. The spell hit Neville, making his fall extremely slow, he even floated in midair for a while and then he landed softly on the ground. Seeing that Neville was out of danger, everyone present breathed a sigh of relief. Especially Professor Hooch. Thank you Mr. Grindelwald, and I'll give Slytherin ten points for your excellent spell work and helping out a classmate at critical moments. Thank you very much, Professor Hooch. The other students, seeing Lucas cast spells they couldn't so easily made their eyes full of admiration. Padma Paddle quietly wanted to get closer to Hermione. Princess Hermione, it looks like your knight is being targeted by many people, you have to be careful. Padma, what are you talking about? Don't hide it, Senior Cho Chong told me all about it. Learning that her little secret was betrayed by her best friend, Hermione blushed and was also a little angry. Although Neville was not injured. But he was too scared and passed out during the fall. Professor Hooch immediately picked him up and walked towards the infirmary. Before leaving, she also asked everyone not to fly at will or they would be punished severely. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement, acting bravely for righteousness, rewards, 20 achievement points and a rememberal. System, I saved someone's life, why only 20 achievement points? The event of being brave for righteousness is too easy for the host, so the reward achievement points are reduced. He shut down the system sullenly. Before Lucas could turn around, he heard the quarrel between Draco and Ron coming from behind. When he wants to understand the situation. The two of them had already rode brooms and flew out like arrows leaving the string. Chapter 39, Ron's Jealousy, Harry in a Dilemma Not long after Professor Hooch left, Draco Malfoy remembered the agreement with Harry. Harry, do you want to come to practice? Just in time, I can tell you how to play Quidditch. Friendships between young wizards are often as simple as that and it certainly is also very simple for a certain Weasley to become jealous of someone. Ron looked at the two walking side by side. Don't mention just how uncomfortable it makes him feel. Ron thought that since he was the one who met Harry first he should be the other person's best friend. And. The Malfoys are Death Eaters. So how could Harry Potter be friends with the children of Death Eaters, Ron complained in his mind. Seeing two people holding brooms and preparing to take off, he rushed over immediately to interrupt them. Harry, what are you doing, how about taking me with you as well? Looking at Ron running towards him Harry nodded in agreement without hesitation. He also wants to resolve the conflict between Draco and Ron. Both are his good friends so he didn't want to be in a dilemma every time. The young innocent Harry fantasized about the future adventures of the three of them together, and the corners of his mouth raised unconsciously. Ron, Draco is going to teach me how to play Quidditch. Didn't you say you often play it at home? Come and teach me too. No problem Harry, trust me, the rules are actually very simple. Ron flew unsteadily to the two of them on his broom, he even pushed Draco off to the side. You. Draco. Looking at the begging in Harry's green eyes Draco took a deep breath and suppressed the anger in his heart. The three of them flew slowly in the air like this. In the way, Ron's mouth kept talking about the rules of Quidditch, not giving Draco a chance to speak at all. Harry looked very embarrassed on the side. In fact, Draco has already told himself all of these things. It was just an excuse but who knew that Ron would actually take it so seriously. Listening to the chattering voice that talked non-stop, Draco snorted impatiently. This also attracted the dissatisfaction of Ron Weasley who was looking for an excuse to start a fight with him just to keep him away from Harry. Hey, Malfoy, do you think there's something wrong with my explanation? Draco looked at Harry, 
and replied after a few seconds, No, you speak very well, but I don't know if your technique is as good as your mouth. Would you like to compete? Ron asked with a flushed face. Ron's proposal hit the nail on the head. Draco Malfoy frowned, as you wish. He took out a rememberal from inside his robes. This is what Neville Longbottom dropped on the ground just now. Whoever gets the rememberal first wins, how is it? Of course, if anyone accidentally breaks it, he will have to buy Mr. Longbottom a new one, Weasley, do you dare? Let's do it. Ron wanted to save face. Immediately after agreeing, he held his broom tightly with both hands. Well then, to be fair, Harry will throw the ball. Handing the rememberal to Harry, Draco reminded, Harry, just use the launching spell I gave you a few days ago. Harry nodded, drew his wand and pointed it at the rememberal. What a sigh. The ball instantly flew into the sky far away. Draco started immediately, and flew across the sky like a hawk finding its prey. As for Ron, his start was half a beat slower, and the flight path was not as stable as Draco's. But even so, relying on his courage alone, he slowly caught up with Draco. On the ground, students from all four houses were rooting for whom they supported. Only Hermione frowned. How could they do this? Professor Hooch said that we are not allowed to fly without authorization, and points will be deducted. And it's too dangerous for them to compete like this. What if something happens? Hermione stared at Lucas after she finished speaking, as if she wanted to hear his opinion. Hermione, Draco's flying level is not low. Trust him, it's fine. As for Professor Hooch, as long as they land before she comes back, I think there will be no problem. Hermione rolled her eyes. Although she didn't quite agree, she didn't refute again. It seemed that they had acquiesced in the actions of the three of them. At this time, Draco had caught up to the memory ball and he looked contemptuously at Ron Weasley, who was half a body behind. This competition was too easy for Draco. He didn't even use his full strength. Sorry Weasley, I won the contest. He reached for the memory ball, but just when his fingertips touched the sphere, the broom suddenly lost control and began to fly left and right. It turned out that Ron, who saw that he was about to lose the contest, in desperation, slammed into the tail of Draco's broom. By the time Draco got the broom steady again, he was a long way behind Ron, making his expression turn ruthless. Immediately accelerated his broom and chased after him. The two collided with each other in the air repeatedly and in the end, no one was pleased, because instead of catching it, they ended up smashing Neville's rememberal. Shit, Weasley, you scumbag. Forget it. Malfoy, who doesn't know that everyone in your family is a Death Eater, so you shouldn't pretend to be a good person here, just like your friend, it looks disgusting. Weasley, I dare you to say that again, dot. Let me tell you, you and your family are Death Eaters, and your friend is an evil dark wizard. I read in the newspaper about what he did. Bastard. Draco drew his wand and pointed it at Ron Weasley. Seeing this, Harry hurriedly stood between the two of them. If you have something to say, let's go down first. Harry, get out of the way, Weasley must apologize to me and my friends today. Draco said seriously. Without waiting for Harry to continue persuading. Ron said, apologize? What I said is the truth, why should I apologize? Draco's face looked ruthless, and pointed at Ron with his wand, stupefy. Chapter 40, The Crazy Reduction of House Points Draco learned the spell from Lucas but because the study time is still short, the effect was not very strong. But, it wasn't Ron Weasley that he was targeting either. Being a Slytherin, he clearly knew the consequences of using the spell to hit his classmates. So. The stunning spell just hit Ron's broom and the magic attached to the spell made Ron spin several times in the air. Waiting until the broom has stabilized, Ron drew his own wand as well. No one knows what spell he used but everyone saw a red light flying towards Draco who evaded the spell hastily. Unfortunately, the broom was hit by the spell and set on fire. It was the fire-making charm. Lucas took his broom and with a kick of both feet, he flew towards Draco. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement, first flight, reward, 20 achievement points. At this moment, Draco's broom was completely out of control and the speed was even faster than Neville just now. Seeing this, Harry rushed to Draco trying to save him from the broom. Lucas, who arrived a little later, was going to help as well. Ron on the side taunted, What? When you saw Malfoy in danger, you came to help immediately. Sure enough, 
they are a group of like-minded guys. Ron Weasley, did you cast the fire-making charm on Draco himself? I do not know what you are talking about. Although Ron didn't admit it, his unnatural expression had already betrayed himself. Lucas' finger pointed coveredly at the opponent's broom. Then chanted the incantation of the confusion spell in a very small voice. When the confusion charm is cast, it has no color and no sound and it can interfere with people or objects silently. The broom under Ron suddenly began to swing wildly. It seems to be planning to throw him off. After doing that, Lucas lowered his body and continued towards Draco on his broom. He never thought of himself as a good person. But like other Slytherins, he will never betray his established friendships. Like the sorting hat in the Back to School song. In Slytherin, you can make the truest friends. So Lucas didn't mind teaching Ron Weasley a lesson. As for whether the other party's life will be in danger, he is not worried. When Lucas passed the tower just now, he noticed that Professor McGonagall was looking in their direction. Well even if Weasley fell to his death, a Weasley less a Weasley more, who cares? He won't be missed. The performance of the ancient shooting star was brought over the limit by Lucas. The people on the ground only saw his figure disappear in a flash. Even the fastest eyes can't catch up. Soon, Lucas caught up with the two in front. Seeing him coming, Harry breathed a sigh of relief. Lucas, Draco's broom is out of control and I can't get close at all. Leave it to me, you prepare to catch him. With that said, Lucas drew his wand and pointed it at Draco's broom. Finite incantatum. The spell hit successfully and the broom flying around immediately stopped. But due to the spell, the magic enchantments in the broom were stopped as well. The flying broom in Draco's hands temporarily became a common broom. Harry. Watching the rapidly falling Draco, Harry immediately controlled the broom and chased after him. Finally, he hugged him by the waist before he was about to hit the ground. Lucas raised his eyebrows in midair and let out a whistle. Merlin's beard, how dare you do that? Professor McGonagall's angry voice came from the direction of the castle. Looking at Ron who was still struggling in midair. With a wave of her wand she turned the broom into a feather. The strong sense of weightlessness made Ron think he was dead, but unexpectedly, he landed on a super long slide. It's really a clever transfiguration spell. Lucas, who had witnessed everything, couldn't help saying. Ron followed the slide to a place about three meters above the ground and Professor McGonagall waved her wand again. Ron let out a cry of pain as he fell to the ground. The sound of bones breaking came clearly to everyone's ears. This was to teach cause and effect to the students of the four houses. She called Harry to her side again and questioned him in detail. Professor McGonagall, who knew the whole process, took Ron's wand in her hand. Priory incantatum. Everyone saw a crimson light blooming in front of Ron's wand and Professor McGonagall's expression immediately became serious. Mr. Ron Weasley, I never imagined that one day the students of my house would cast jinxes on their classmates. And you're only in first grade. You're such a disappointment to me, I'll send a letter to your parents so they know about this. Also, 50 points from Gryffindor for your disappointing performance. Ron became anxious when he heard it. He ignored his misplaced arm. Standing up and shouting, it's all Malfoy's fault, he's a damn death eater. Shut up, Mr. Weasley, there are only students in the school, there are no death eaters, and Gryffindor will be deducted another 50 points for slandering your classmates. At this moment, the lion cubs hated the red-haired fool and his big mouth. Professor McGonagall looked at Draco and Harry again. The two of you take charge of the flight without authorization, and ten points will be deducted from each. Mr. Draco Malfoy, you took the lead in using a spell on your classmates, and I will deduct twenty points from Slytherin. Good guy. In just a few seconds, the Slytherin lost thirty points. In the past two days, Lucas didn't earn enough points to deduct. Fortunately, Gryffindor was worse than them, losing 110 points. This has just started, and they have basically lost their qualifications for the House Cup. Let's thank the great Mr. Ronald Weasley. Professor McGonagall looked at Lucas one last time and said, in recognition of Mr. Grindelwald's life-saving behavior, Slytherin will add 10 points. After saying that, Professor McGonagall took Harry and Ron to the castle. Lucas knows. With this departure, Harry will probably become the youngest seeker at Hogwarts in a century. Soon, the flying lessons were over. Lucas was just planning to go back to the dormitory to rest but he saw Professor Snape walking towards him with a gloomy face. Grindelwald, Malfoy, you two come with me. Draco trembled all over, 
he was too familiar with the other party's expression. This is the standard angry look. Chapter 41, Halloween is coming. Mr. Malfoy, if you like Gryffindor so much, as your head of house, I can consider making an exception for you to transfer. Professor, I... I don't want to listen to your explanation. Your recklessness and stupidity are disgusting. Even trolls are a hundred times smarter than you. Now, leave my office immediately, I will notify Lucius later, let your father discipline you. Draco's face turned pale. Probably frightened by Professor Snape's words. Watching him walk out of the office slowly with his head down, Lucas sighed, Professor, you seem to have scared him. Mr. Grindelwald thinks he's fine. Lucas? Was it wrong for him to save people? Looking at him puzzled, Professor Snape said softly, Ingenious confusion spell, if you don't check the broom, I'm afraid everyone will be fooled by you. Mr. Grindelwald, do you know what you're doing? You're murdering your own classmates. Snape stared intently at the blonde boy in front of him. The office suddenly became quiet. After a while, Lucas laughed suddenly, Professor, your joke is not funny at all. You can check my wand. I didn't use any confusion spell. Snort. Snape didn't believe what he said, the boy in front of him is much more cunning than he imagined. Although Dumbledore had confirmed that Lucas had nothing to do with the German Ministry of Magic incident last night. But Snape's intuition was telling him that the person who destroyed the German Ministry of Magic is the boy in front of him. Mr. Grindelwald, the wizarding world has been put at risk recently because of some confusion caused by certain people. Even those children from wizarding families look frightened, but I didn't see the slightest panic on your face. Why? Aren't you afraid of those who do evil everywhere? Scared? Of course I'm afraid. Lucas replied with a nod. But isn't this Hogwarts? No one will break in here and make trouble, right? I trust the headmaster and the professors, so I am not afraid. Snape stared at the blue eyes in front of him, and it took a long time before he spoke. Let's hope so. Let's talk about another thing. The Quidditch house team is missing a good seeker. Marcus Flint recommended you to me, Mr. Grindelwald, I don't think you will refuse. Well. Professor Snape, could you please not be so overtly threatening? He saw that the other party just took out Lucas' potion homework. Looking at the way Snape looks, if he doesn't agree. Lucas is afraid that he's going to get a troll for this assignment. It is my duty to win honor for the house, Professor. As soon as Lucas finished speaking, he saw an extra O, oh, outstanding, on the parchment. What? Think I'm going to threaten you with grades, Mr. Grindelwald? How could it be? I trust Professor Snape as a person. If there is nothing wrong, I will leave first. Well, don't forget to come to my office for your detention later today. Leaving Professor Snape's office, Lucas breathed a sigh of relief. Unexpectedly, Dumbledore would send Professor Snape to watch him. Thinking of himself being treated the same way as Voldemort, Lucas shook his head and chuckled a little. Time flies. In the blink of an eye, the little wizards lived in Hogwarts for nearly two months. The weather is getting cooler, making the students put on thick robes and wear a scarf that represents their respective houses. Slytherin Dormitory Lucas stared at the letter in his hand, lost in thought. The German Ministry of Magic has reached an agreement with the British Ministry of Magic. After Halloween, before Christmas, someone will come to England for a visit. But anyone with a discerning eye knows that the German Ministry of Magic is here to make trouble. And today is the last day of October, which is the annual Halloween. I hope that poor Quirrell can win a little bit tonight. If I mess up, I will lose my trump card against those people in Germany. Lucas put away the letter, it will be of great use later. System, open my character list. Name, Lucas Grindelwald. Age, 11 years old. Identity, leader of the Alliance. Son of Gellert Grindelwald, freshman at Hogwarts. Bloodline, Void Elf, First Awakening. Talent, Void Fisher. Magic Power, 15, Common Aura Level. Charms, 8. Transfiguration, 4. Dark Arts, 9, Full Level. Divination, 3. Potions, 2. Skills, Occlumency, Level 9, Fire Shield, Level 8, Disillusionment Charm. Level 5, Killing Curse, Level 9, Shattering Curse, Level 3, Transformation Spell, Level 4. Magic Item, Felix Felicis. Achievement Points, 19,750. 
After two months of exploration, Lucas got a lot of achievement points and his performance in class was also impeccable. The purpose is to have enough achievement points to participate in the lottery after the Platinum Prize Pool opens tonight. Hard work pay off. These two months were really not in vain, and he was only a little short of saving 20,000 achievement points. Because of Lucas' outstanding performance, he has a great reputation among the students of the four houses. He is now the representative of excellent students in everyone's mind. Someone who is destined to become a prefect and head boy in the future. Besides, Lucas' magic power has also reached 15, which is stronger than that of an adult wizard and has reached the level of an auror. The biggest gain is the transformation spell. Joining Professor McGonagall's Transfiguration Club quickly raised his transfiguration spell to level 4. Closing the status list, Lucas went to the closet to choose what to wear to the ball tonight. At this time, the door of the dormitory was suddenly opened from the outside. Lucas, come and see how my clothes look, I've been choosing them for tonight's ball. Mr. Draco Malfoy, has no one ever taught you to knock before entering someone else's room? Looking at Lucas' unfriendly eyes, Draco smirked and exited the room. Knock knock. Come in. Hey Lucas, how are my clothes? Draco stands there looking like a proud peacock. Lucas nodded perfunctorily. I'm going to invite Harry to our ball tonight, how about you? The boy who lived coming to Slytherin? I don't think Pansy would be happy if she figured it out. She's been waiting for tonight's ball for a long time. What's that got to do with Pansy Parkinson? Seeing that the clueless boy didn't understand, Lucas shrugged and didn't continue talking. Okay, it's time for the charms class, quickly change back to the school robe, let's go to class. After saying that, Lucas picked up the wand on the table and walked out. Chapter 42, Exploration Achievements Have Other Mysteries Damn it, my application to join the house Quidditch team was rejected again. On the way to the charms classroom Draco waved the application form and grumbled dissatisfiedly. You and Harry are both on the house team, why can't I? As he saw his friend beside him with a look of displeasure Lucas said helplessly, didn't I give you an idea a long time ago? Ask your father to sponsor the latest broomstick for the team. Don't mention it. The letter from my father was six feet long because of the last flight lesson. Oh, why should I bring this up? It seemed that he remembered the contents of the letter and he covered his head in pain. So, how dare I ask for so many broomsticks? You don't dare? Didn't you write a letter to your family recently? Seeing Draco nodding, Lucas patted him on the shoulder. This silly boy, when they go on Christmas holiday, will probably, inevitably be pissing off Lucius Malfoy. Charms Classroom Professor Phileas Flitwick is standing on a stack of books giving a lecture. It is said that the professor has goblin blood, and that's why he's so small. But the professor's skill with a wand should not be underestimated. You must know that Professor Flitwick was the champion of international dueling competitions for two consecutive times. Oh, it's good to see you again. Today we are going to talk about the levitation spell. Wingardium Leviosa. Professor Flitwick made a swish and flick with his wand and the books beside him started floating in the air. Seeing the curious and admiring eyes of the little wizards the smile on Flitwick's face widened again. Next, I'll find a classmate to demonstrate, Mr. Grindelwald, if that is all right with you. Thank you for this opportunity, Professor. After two months of classes, Professors of various subjects seem to have formed a tacit understanding. Whenever they want a student to demonstrate something, the first choice is always Lucas. This also allowed him to gain a lot of achievement points, while also adding a lot of points to Slytherin. Wingardium Leviosa Accompanied by the incantation the books and feathers on everyone's desk started floating in the air. Professor Flitwick yelled in feigned surprise, and he even accidentally fell off the book pile he was standing on. His actions made the little wizards laugh heartily. This is the head of Ravenclaw House, Phileas Flitwick. A gentle, humorous professor. Oh, perfect levitation spell, five points for Slytherin. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the achievement, perfect levitation charm, reward, 50 achievement points, holiday bonus. There are still 200 achievement points to go. Hearing the system prompt, Lucas mentally calculated how far away he was from 20,000 achievement points. As long as the troll appears as expected tonight, it shouldn't be a big problem to make up the remaining 200 achievement points. As for why it can't be done in other classes, it's because the next subject is history of magic. It's well known that Cuthbert Bins of History of Magic only reads from textbooks and otherwise ignores the students' presence altogether. 
After Lucas' demonstration the other students also started to practice. As Hogwarts explosives expert, Mr. Seamus Finnegan lived up to expectations and once again blew his practice feather to pieces. Ron next to him also suffered and had black soot all over his face. As for why Ron didn't sit with Harry. Lucas turned his head to look at Draco and Harry who were studying the levitation charm together. He doesn't know if his decision was good or bad in helping Draco befriend Harry, he just hopes that Lucius Malfoy will not blame him. Soon, it's time for the class to end. The little wizards were still full of ideas, and even hoped that the next lesson would still be charms. Lucas walked out of the classroom under the eyes of everyone. Coincidentally, he met Miss Hermione Granger who also finished her own class. Lucas, are you still reading in our common room tonight? Oh. Joking voices came from all around. Lucas was perhaps the first Slytherin in years to enter the Ravenclaw common room. I'm afraid not today, have you forgotten? There will be a Halloween ball tonight. Oh, look at my memory, Lucas, what kind of clothes do you think I should wear? You look beautiful in anything, so be confident, Miss Hermione. Hearing what he said Hermione relaxed quite a bit. As for Hermione, a muggle-born child, will she be bullied when she goes to Slytherin? Lucas wasn't worried about that. As long as he is there, others dare not say excessive words, at most they will just ignore her. Oh, the handsome little chief actually invited Miss Hermione to the ball, what an enviable friendship. Yes, poor Fred and George, they are very curious about the Slytherin ball. It's a pity that no one invited them. The twins came out of nowhere. The two spoke one by one, teasing Lucas and Hermione. You, talk slowly, I'm going to the Great Hall first. The easily embarrassed Hermione ran towards the Great Hall with her head down and Lucas gave the two of them a reproachful look. Hey, little chief, your eyes are detrimental to your usual elegant image. Okay well, as an apology, the Weasley twins will present you with a precious gift. He followed the twins to a deserted corner of the castle where the two mysteriously took out a piece of folded old parchment. Lucas immediately perked up. The Marauder's Map, he has been waiting a long time to get his hands on it. We secretly took this from Filch's office, and we studied it for a long time before we knew how to use it. Little Chief, please keep your eyes open, the next moment will be a miracle. The twins looked at each other, then drew their wands. I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. Chapter 43, The Increasingly Mysterious Hogwarts Black ink outlined Hogwarts on the parchment. The Marauder's map is so comprehensive that it even includes the Forbidden Forest. You have to admit that the Marauders were indeed geniuses. Look, our little chief is stunned. George, it's not his fault, Lucas has never seen such a miraculous thing. Of course Fred, not everyone is as stable as you and me. He gave the two of them an elegant deadpan look. Lucas solemnly put away the Marauder's map. Fred, George, thank you for the present, I like it very much. The twins smiled happily. Just like it, the gift has been delivered, let's go to the Great Hall quickly, the delicious food will all be gone if we are too late. The two scrambled to the direction of the Great Hall and Lucas strolled after them. Probably because of the holiday, today the place is busier than ever. Even the Slytherins were talking a lot louder than usual. Lucas came to Ravenclaw's long table as usual, sitting next to Hermione under everyone's ambiguous gazes. Although she's already used to it, Hermione's cheeks still blushed a bit. Lucas, you kidnapped our little princess from Ravenclaw, shouldn't you compensate us with something? Cho Chong opened her mouth to tease the two of them. In exchange she received a gentle thump from Hermione. However, she did not deny the other party's words. Okay, whatever you want to ask, just say it. Lucas smiled and said to the students of Ravenclaw. Since he always goes to their common room lately, his relationship with the young eagles is very good. Actually, Lucas initially just wanted to complete the exploration achievement. He didn't expect that there would be so many books in their common room. But it is also strange to say. Lucas has explored Hogwarts Castle all over the past few months. Whether it is the teaching area or the library. Or the infirmary or even the third-floor corridor guarded by the three-headed dog Fluffy. Without exception, they all gave him exploration achievement points. But it's strange. The four major houses, except for the achievements of basic exploration, such as the small number of achievement points given by places such as the common room. The overall exploration progress has not been completed. Slytherin area, Lucas can probably guess why because he still lacks the Chamber of Secrets. The same problem occurred with Ravenclaw. 
Did Rowena Ravenclaw also build a hidden secret room? So what about the other two founders? Are they also harboring secrets within the castle? Lucas became more and more interested in the castle. It's like decrypting an expedition, the more you discover the more you realize that this castle still hides many unknown secrets. Soon it was evening. Lucas rubbed his eyes and walked out of the History of Magic classroom. It's not that he doesn't want to listen carefully, it's just that Cuthbert Binns is too hypnotizing with his droning voice. Halloween is a very important festival for Hogwarts students. The road to the Great Hall was full of chattering and laughter. The students were walking in groups of three or four, discussing what kind of sumptuous dinner they will have tonight. Inside the Great Hall all the candles that used to float in the air were replaced with pumpkin lanterns in order to set the atmosphere of Halloween. The ceiling, which was originally bright with stars and moon, has become cloudy at this moment, and thunder can be heard from time to time. The long tables of the four houses have already been filled with rich food and there are countless cakes along with candies. Oh! I love Halloween! The little wizards rushed towards the long table cheering. Lucas also came to his place and sat down. Looking at the little snakes who are smiling and communicating in low voices. I hope they can smile like this again for a while. Lucas looked at the teacher's table and he was relieved to find that Quirinus Quirrell was not in his seat. He was really afraid that his presence would affect the storyline. Now everything seems to be going according to plan. Praise the powerful plot restoration power. Just when Lucas was about to look away. Suddenly, Dumbledore was looking at him. Noticing that he was aware, Dumbledore raised the goblet in his hand as a sign. Lucas, why don't you eat, if you don't hurry up, you won't be able to catch up with the ball later. Draco, who was eating in a graceful but fast manner, paused for a moment to speak. Lucas raised his eyebrows and looked at the other party, his eyes full of disgust. The door of the Great Hall was suddenly pushed open and Professor Quirrell entered in a panic. Troll. There is a troll in the dungeons. I thought you ought to know. After finishing speaking, Quirrell rolled his eyes and passed out. The room became very quiet. After a short silence, the students started to scream in terror. Troll. Ugly, stupid, and powerful. Because of the high resistance to magic, it is very difficult for ordinary adult wizards to defeat them. The Great Hall gradually became chaotic. The students who felt the danger wanted to escape here as soon as possible. The same goes for the little snakes of Slytherin. But compared to people from other houses, they are a little calmer. But even so, the slightly trembling body still exposed the inner fear of the little snakes. Calm down. Lucas reassured his classmates. He turned his gaze to the prefect Gemma Farley not far away. Prefect, can we let the seniors protect us in the middle? No problem, that is how it should be. After Gemma finished speaking, she looked at the other grade chiefs. Everyone acted quickly. At this time, Dumbledore also stood up and presided over the situation. Under his arrangement, the students of each house returned to the dormitory under the leadership of the prefects in an orderly manner. Lucas. Cho Chong anxiously came to Lucas. Hermione went to the bathroom just now, and she hasn't come back until now, is she okay? Damn it. This damn plot restoration. Lucas handed the first year's command over to Draco and immediately after ran to the women's bathroom. Chapter 44, A Big Fool with Full Magic Resistance. Second floor of Hogwarts Castle, women's bathroom. Looking at herself in the mirror, Hermione grumbled. Hermione Granger, look at your figure, you are going to attend Lucas Ball later, so please keep your mouth shut. After blaming herself for a long time, Hermione turned off the sink tap in frustration. Ever since she met Lucas she found herself worrying about unimportant things all the time. This has never been the case before. Well. Hermione sighed and turned to go back to the Great Hall. Not knowing if it is an illusion, she seemed to feel the ground shaking. Looking at the giant monster that completely blocked the door Hermione rubbed her eyes, and said in disbelief, Merlin, how could there be such a thing in school? Although she was surprised, she didn't just stand there waiting to die. In fact, after a long time interacting with Lucas, Hermione has become calmer than before. Stupefy. Hermione's stunning spell hit the troll successfully. But it just made the big monster shake its head. Tisk. Hermione took two steps back again raising her wand to aim at the troll. Petrificus totalis. Petrificus totalis. Petrificus totalis. A series of three petrification spells only slowed down the troll's movements. 
Hermione saw her chance and tried to slip away from between the troll's feet. But she still underestimated the troll's magic resistance. She had just reached the troll's feet and the opponent had already recovered from the influence of the petrification curse. The troll raised the club and swung it hard at Hermione. The wooden stick rubbed against the air, making a loud whistling sound that made Hermione freeze in place. In the nick of time, Lucas' voice came from outside the door. Hermione, hide against the wall. Subconsciously doing as Lucas said, Hermione had just approached the wall on the side of the door when she heard the sound of incantations coming from outside. Stupefy. A blinding red light hit the troll's back. The powerful magic of the spell knocked the troll into the air, causing it to hit the wall inside the bathroom. Due to the huge size of the monster, the wooden cubicles in the bathroom were smashed by it. Lucas. At this moment, Lucas has tens of millions of special effects in Hermione's eyes. It is simply radiant and handsome like a knight in shining armor. Hermione threw herself into his arms, calling out his name with sobs. It's all right. Lucas patted Hermione on the back, keeping his eyes on the troll. Although the powerful spell knocked the giant monster into the air. But the stunning effect is not satisfactory. A few seconds passed, and the troll shook his head and stood up. Having been hurt by Lucas, the troll roared, expressing his anger. Hermione, I'll deal with the troll first, you get behind me. Be careful, trolls have extremely high magic resistance, and they are hard to deal with. It's better to wait for the professors to come. Seeing the worry in the girl's eyes. Lucas chuckled and said, Don't worry, it has strong magic resistance, so won't it be fine as long as I don't directly attack it with magic spells. In Hermione's puzzled eyes. Lucas waved his wand and said, Incarcerous. He cast three such spells in a row. Three thick ropes firmly trapped the troll on the wall. The giant beast struggled hard for some time and managed to pull one of the ropes out of the wall. Lucas wasn't going to give it a chance to break free. The wand waved lightly and the broken wood on the ground was suspended in the air. Lucas cast the transfiguration spell on the wood and in an instant, there were many sharp weapons such as swords, arrows, and spears in the bathroom. Magic resistance is full? I hope your thick-skinned appearance can block it a few more times. Lucas' eyes turned cold after he finished speaking. The wand pointed at the troll and said, What a wayside. All the weapons floating in midair were launched at once, Breaking through the air, they flew towards the giant monster. Lucas reached out and covered Hermione's eyes. The sensible girl didn't struggle. The sound of weapons cutting through flesh reached her ears, making the girl's body tremble. Merlin's smelly socks, what the hell is going on here, Mr. Grindelwald? There was the sound of chaotic footsteps behind him. Professor McGonagall looked at Lucas and Hermione first. Seeing that the two of them were safe and sound, they were relieved. Immediately afterwards, she saw the tragic death of the troll. Oh Merlin, the troll is dead? You made this Lucas. Sorry, Professor, Hermione was in danger at the time, and the common spells were useless against the troll. I could only use transfiguration against it and I seem to have gone a bit overboard. Lucas looked at the professors apologetically. Looking at the dead troll, Snape narrowed his eyes and gazed at Lucas meaningfully. Can defeat trolls that even most adult wizards cannot defeat. Lucas looked suspicious again in his eyes. Especially after knowing that the Savior Potter has a good relationship with Lucas, Snape placed Lucas' danger level above that of Quirrell. It's not your fault, dear, on the contrary, your transfiguration spell is eye-opening. As a professor of transfiguration, Minerva McGonagall saw the essence of those swords and spears at a glance. Mr. Lucas Grindelwald, I give ten points to Slytherin for bravely facing the troll and rescuing your classmate. Thank you very much. Professor. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement, Troll Slayer, Reward, 300 Achievement Points, Holiday Bonus, Trolls Snot. Ding, the limited platinum prize pool for Halloween is open, this prize pool will last until 12 midnight, host please spend as much as you want. The professor stayed behind to clean up the mess while Lucas sent Hermione back to the Ravenclaw dormitory. When he returned to Slytherin's common room he found everyone gathered there. Lucas. Are you okay? I heard you encountered a troll. Draco asked worriedly. When everyone saw him coming back, they immediately surrounded him. Lucas shook his head. Seeing that everyone was wearing wizard robes, he asked curiously. What's the matter? Is the ball cancelled? Hearing his question, the faces of Draco and others immediately became ugly. Chapter 45, 
Draco's Power. Small Christmas Gift 1 Fourth Chapters Today. Seeing that the faces of several people were not right. Lucas turned to look at the others again and saw that everyone in the common room looked unhappy. The ball was cancelled. That's not exactly true. Eli McMillan replied. It's just that something like this happened, and everyone is not interested. As soon as Eli finished speaking, Draco continued. The prefect just informed us that no student is allowed to leave the dormitory of their house without authorization tonight. In other words, none of the friends we invited to the ball can come, so who is interested in attending the ball? Draco's tone was full of complaints. Only then did Lucas understand why everyone looked unhappy. He heard that someone had been preparing for this ball for more than a month. But now the people they invited can't come, which is really disappointing. Lucas went to sit on the sofa in the middle of the room while Draco and others also sat around him. Others surrounded several people in the middle. Don't be depressed, everyone. We will live in Hogwarts for several years in the future. The ball can be held at any time, right? Lucas had just finished speaking when Pansy Parkinson's haughty voice came from the side. Although what you said is correct, our preparations for so many days can't be in vain, right? For today. I asked my family to send all the most beautiful and expensive dresses. As Pansy's good friend, Daphne Greengrass nodded quickly. That's right, I wrote letters to show off in front of my sister for a long time, now I'm going to be laughed at by that little girl. Apart from the two of them. Others more or less have some reasons of their own. Lucas seems to have become the object of everyone's confidence as if they expected him to solve all of their problems. Waiting until all the complaints are over. He smiled and said, there's nothing we can do about it, and we can't reason with idiots like trolls. The professors are also thinking about our safety. What if there is another one outside? Let's wait for the professors to deal with everything before talking about the ball. There might be another one? Merlin, what is Dumbledore doing? Why are there trolls in the school? Draco Malfoy said in disbelief. Did he use Hogwarts as a playground for monsters? It's too much. Draco, calm down to appease the other party's emotions. Lucas looked at everyone curiously, such a big incident happened, have you sent a letter to your family to report that you are safe? Pansy and the others blinked and shook their heads neatly. Draco frowned slightly and said, why do we need to tell our family about such a small matter? Wow! Our little Draco has finally grown up and stopped looking for daddy. Faced with Lucas teasing, Draco became furious. But before he could speak, Lucas continued. But ah! Uh, you should find your father this time, shouldn't you? Seeing Lucas' meaningful eyes Draco frowned. Obviously, Lucas's words have other meanings. As a Slytherin, even if he is always mixed with lions, it can't change the Slytherin characteristics of Draco. He just thought for a moment before he understood what Lucas meant. Not only him, but the other little snakes also suddenly realized. Everyone looked at each other, and immediately got up and went back to the room to write letters to their families. Lucas smiled, got up and said to the rest. Tomorrow is our first Quidditch match of the semester with Gryffindor, everyone rest early. After saying that, he walked to his dormitory. After making sure that Lucas was gone, several other grade chiefs got together. Second year chief Eli McMillan was the first to ask, what do you guys think? Payne Traverse said with great interest, it seems that our first year chief is planning something. As his seniors, we should help. I'm going to let the guys in the sixth grade recall the things they used to do when they were young, and write to their parents to complain. After finishing speaking, Payne walked into the boys' dormitory. Several other people looked at each other and smiled, and soon left the common room. Lucas returned to the room and immediately locked the door before throwing himself on the soft bed. He looked at the virtual platinum prize pool in front of him and said, System, use all my achievement points to draw the platinum prize pool. It is detected that the host has a total of 20100 achievement points the platinum prize pool is 200 achievement points each draw, and a total of 100 lottery draws can be made. Are you sure you want to proceed? Yes use them all. The voice just fell and a dazzling light appeared in front of Lucas' eyes. Because there were too many draws, he couldn't even open his eyes from the brilliance of the rewards at all levels. Fortunately, it all was over soon. Immediately afterwards. A system beep sounded in Lucas' ear. The lottery draw is over, and this lottery draw has won, 45 bronze rewards, 33 silver rewards, 18 gold rewards, and 4 platinum rewards. Because there are too many rewards, 
the system will integrate and display duplicate rewards for you. Bronze rewards received this time, 17 prizes of golden galleons, total amount, 1420, 3 Halloween limited wizard hats, 8 kinds of honey dukes candies, 1 popular game console, 6 trendy men's wizard robes, rue essence 3 bottles, mandrake leaf asterisk 7. Chapter 46, Another Step Towards the Strongest Dark Wizard, The Quarrel in the Headmaster's Office. Silver Rewards for this Lottery, Household Magic, Level 1, 9, Cleaning Charm, Level 1, 7, Animation Charm, Level 3, 6, Impervious, Level 1, 9, Transfiguration Master's Practice Experience, Nimbus 2000, Modified. Gold Rewards for this Lucky Draw, Talent Points 2 3, Fire Shield. Level 7, 3, Cruciatus Curse, Level 6, Cruciatus Curse, Level 5, 3, Imperious Curse, Level 7, 4, Verita Serum 2, Magic Weave Embroidery 1, Felix Felicis Asterisk 1. Platinum Rewards for this Lottery, Talent Eye of Foresight, Item Mirror Crystal, Ancient Elven Magic Soul Devouring, Level 1, Item Talent Breakthrough Card. 100 Total Rewards. Just looking at it is already dazzling. Putting the low-level rewards aside, Lucas first looked at the four platinum rewards. Eye of Foresight, upgradable can predict the future up to 10 seconds. Compared with those wizards who know divination. The ability to predict for 10 seconds doesn't seem to be very useful. But if it is used in battle, it will be different. Always anticipating the enemy's next moves is a very terrifying ability. His eyes felt cool for a while, and the Eye of Foresight successfully completed the fusion. Mirror Crystal this item can 100% replicate an item. The copied counterfeit has only 10% of the power of the original item. And this prop cannot be used for human reproduction. Looking at the transparent rhombic crystal in his hand, Lucas stared at it thoughtfully. The appearance of this prop gave him a little idea about the philosopher's stone. Keeping the mirror crystal in a safe place, Lucas looked at the remaining two rewards. Soul Devouring Level 1 Devour the target's soul power with elf magic and condense it into purple crystals for storage, which can be used to increase the strength and magic power of one's own soul. Seeing this introduction, Lucas felt that this didn't seem like the kind of magic an elf would use. It's more like a spell used by demons. But, knowing this magic, he seems to have a way to deal with Mr. Noseless. The last talent breakthrough card is a good thing. It can awaken talents that are already at full level, breaking through the upper limit of human talents. Applying this precious breakthrough card to his dark arts talent. Immediately, there was a sound of chains breaking in Lucas' mind. There is also a sense of relaxation in the body. Finishing checking out the platinum rewards. Lucas said as he looked at the densely packed list of rewards left. System, assign the six talent points one point for charms, one point for divination, two points for potions, and two points for transfiguration. As for the spells, they should be synthesized and learned. There was a flash of light and tens of rewards disappeared instantly. System, open the character list. Name, Lucas Grindelwald. Age, 11 years old. Identity, leader of the Alliance, son of Gellert Grindelwald, freshman at Hogwarts. Bloodline, Void Elf, First Awakening. Talents, Void Fisher, Eye of Foresight. Magic Power, 15, Common Aura Level. Charms, 9, Full Level. Transfiguration, 6. Dark Arts, 10, Awakened. Divination, 4. Potions, 4. Elven Magic, Soul Devouring, Level 1. Skills, Occlumency, Level 9, Fire Shield, Level 9, Disillusionment Charm, Level 5, Killing Curse, Level 9, Transfiguration Spell, Level 5, Cruciatus Curse, Level 7, Imperious Curse, Level 9, Repairing Charm, Level 4, Shield Charm, Level 6, Shattering Curse, Level 3, Animation Charm, Level 3, Impervious, Level 3, Household Magic, Level 3, Cleaning Charm, Level 2, Legilimency, Level 4. Magic Items, Felix Felicis 2, Verita Serum 2, Magic Weave Embroidery, Mirror Crystal. Achievement Points, 100. System, What Does the Awakening After the Dark Arts Talent Mean? And can I continue to add some dark arts talent? Answer to the host, awakening means that the host can use any dark arts to cast spells silently, and their power is increased by 20%, every two talent points can increase one point of dark arts talent, 
and the upper limit of dark arts talent is changed to 15. Lucas let out a long breath. The improvement this time is really not small, several kinds of dark arts have entered the advanced stage. Even the Imperious Curse and the Fire Shield have reached the full level. Lucas took out the Nimbus 2000, modified, and the Magic Pattern Embroidery. The Magic Pattern Embroidery can be attached to the surface of the clothes to resist a fatal attack, including the Killing Curse. This thing is actually not that useful to Lucas. Mainly it is a disposable item. As for the Nimbus 2000, modified, he can test its performance in tomorrow's Quidditch match. Headmaster's Office Dumbledore turned his back to Snape. The atmosphere between the two was tense. There was also a smell of gunpowder in the air. Headmaster Dumbledore, what were you thinking? Did you deliberately allow Quirrell to unleash the troll? Severus, listen to me. Maybe there is a reason why I have to do this. Snape stared at him with an angry look on his face. Oh? Let me guess, maybe you want Harry Potter to defeat the troll? To remind everyone that he is the savior. But Mr. Headmaster, Harry Potter, like his father, is just an idiot. He hasn't been able to use decent spells until now. Why do you think that stupid little lion cub can't make things worse? Faced with such acute problems. Dumbledore was silent for a while before replying, isn't it good now? The troll has been dealt with, and the students have not suffered any casualties. Oh, yes, thanks to Mr. Grindelwald, the kid you've been watching out for. Severus Snape is worthy of being the king of snakes in Slytherin. Even with Dumbledore, he was merciless. Seeing that Dumbledore was silent, Snape took a bottle of potion from under his baggy robes and placed it on the table. It's a potion for your teeth. Maybe it's because your mind has been filled with those sweets that you keep doing stupid things. I'm more interested in brewing a potion for your senile brain. Another reminder, I'm afraid the Ministry of Magic will know about today's events soon so you should make some preparations early. Dumbledore put away the potion and said as he watched the figure walking out of the office. Thank you Severus, you are as trustworthy as ever. I've said it many times, don't mention it to me, Dumbledore. The voice just fell and Snape had disappeared from the headmaster's room. Looking at the potion in his hand, Dumbledore's eyes flickered, and no one knew what he was planning. Chapter 47, Lucius Malfoy's Surprise The next day, it was cloudless and the sun was shining. Although there were some episodes the previous day, but after one night passed, most students had come out of their fear. Today is the Quidditch match between the Slytherin and Greyfinder house. The two houses are historical rivals, so the intensity and excitement of the Quidditch competition far exceeds that of the other two houses. As the sun shines on the Quidditch pitch, the students came to the stadium together. I really don't understand why so many people like the sport of Quidditch. Hermione grumbled in her seat. In her opinion, Quidditch is a very violent and brutal sport. Of course, with her friend by her side, she couldn't say that. Cho Chong comforted her with a smile, Honey, you only need to watch it once, I guarantee you will like this sport, besides, your knight is also participating today. If it wasn't for Lucas, I wouldn't be here in the cold. Hermione looked down the aisle from where the players would come out. Waiting for the person she came to watch to appear. At the same time, a figure entered Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry with graceful steps. The visitor was dressed in a splendid black wizard robe and his long platinum hair was neatly placed behind his head, looking as luscious as ever. A more domineering demeanor than Draco Malfoy showed this person's identity. Lucius Malfoy, Draco's father. The current head of the Malfoy family, one of the 28 sacred families. Also one of the 12 governors of Hogwarts. Lucius holds a cane with a silver snake's head as he stares contemptuously at everything around him. Anyone who is familiar with him knows it. Lucius is cunning, dangerous, and good at hiding his clumsiness. He even hides his wand in his cane. Headmaster's Office Dumbledore took off his glasses and rubbed his forehead. Although a little tired, he decided to watch the Quidditch match. Today was the first time Harry played for Gryffindor and he wanted to see his golden boy win the match. He believed that Harry would also like to see him in the audience. Dumbledore stepped out from behind the desk. With just a casual wave of his hand, the documents on the table were automatically placed where they should be. The powerful wandless silent magic demonstrates the strength of this great wizard. Boom! The stone gargoyle guarding the entrance to his office suddenly left its position. Then footsteps came from below. Professor Dumbledore, someone wants to see you. 
Professor McGonagall walked quickly into the headmaster's office. Oh, Minerva, how about another day? You know, I have more important things to do right now. Really? Headmaster Dumbledore's important thing is to watch the Quidditch match. Lucius Malfoy's voice came from the bottom of the stairs. Seeing that arrogant figure and contemptuous eyes along with the well-practiced sneer that might as well be a permanent feature of his face. Dumbledore's expression turned serious. Minerva, you go to the stadium first, I'll be there later. Professor McGonagall glanced between the two. Knowing that it was useless for her to stay here, she just happily walked out of the headmaster's office. Since Professor McGonagall left, the two people in the room seemed to have been hit with a tongue-locking curse. They both seemed to be waiting for the other to speak first. Malfoy knocked on the round table, and a cup of steaming black tea appeared immediately. Dumbledore, on the other hand, was eating sizzling bee candy with a very enjoyable expression on his face. Time passed by every minute and every second. Looking at Malfoy's leisurely look, Dumbledore was the first to throw in the towel. Lucius, did you make a special trip to see me, an old man, today? That's right. Malfoy said, putting down his teacup. This answer made Dumbledore's heart sink. He didn't attempt to say anything and just kept listening to Lucius Malfoy speaking in an obnoxious tone. I heard that some bad things happened at school last night. I don't know if it's true, Headmaster Dumbledore. Indeed, but everything has been resolved, it's just a small problem. Oh oh, maybe for you, trolls are indeed a small problem, but for little wizards who are still in school, trolls are very dangerous. Malfoy cast a contemptuous glance at Dumbledore. And creatures like trolls, Shouldn't they be in the Forbidden Forest? Why did they come out of the Forbidden Forest and into the school without hindrance? I need an explanation, Dumbledore. Dumbledore looked into Malfoy's eyes. It seems that he hopes that the other party can see the sincerity in his eyes. Trust me Lucius, it was just an accident. Accident? I'm sorry Headmaster Dumbledore, I and my colleagues in the school board think you are getting more and more confused with your old age. For such irresponsible behavior, as the headmaster, you should take full responsibility. Lucius Malfoy produced a rolled parchment from inside his robes. This is the school board's suspension order for you. It has the signatures of twelve school board members. We all agree that you should take a good rest. As for whether your position of headmaster can be restored, we will discuss it later. Dumbledore rarely looked surprised. Suspension order? You can't do this, Lucius. He opened the parchment and looked at the signatures of the twelve school board members on it, and said in disbelief. Backslash. Chapter 48, The Contest Between the Snakes and the Lions. Four-fourths hope you enjoy the extra chapters, Merry Christmas. Sorry Lucius, I can't leave the school yet. Hearing Dumbledore refuse to accept the suspension Malfoy sneered, Dumbledore, I'm not here to discuss with you this time, but to inform you. Don't forget. Although I and the twelve school governors are not involved in the internal affairs of Hogwarts. However, we do have the power to expel people from Hogwarts, and I mean anyone, including you, Dumbledore. Dumbledore frowned, he cannot leave school at this time, not to mention the big trouble with Quirrell inside. Even his test for Harry Potter wasn't done yet. If he were suspended at this time, it would have an impact on many of Dumbledore's subsequent plans. As Harry's first year back in the wizarding world, whether the image of the savior boy can be established, the next plan is critical. It's undeniable that Dumbledore is a great man. He gave his love to the whole wizarding world. He's smart, mature, and powerful. He counted everyone, including the boy who lived. But such calculations are not for himself. This is one of the reasons why Dumbledore is not hated. He calculated everyone, but tried his best to protect everyone. Even before dying, he made arrangements for the future. Dumbledore took another look at the suspension in his hand and said. Lucius, can this suspension be executed a few days later? I only need a few days. I'm very sorry Dumbledore, but you will have to leave school tomorrow at the latest. Of course, you can still exercise your authority as headmaster for today. Malfoy stood up and straightened his luxurious robes, then he took the cane at his side and extended an invitation to Dumbledore. Today seems to be the quidditch match between Slytherin and Gryffindor. Headmaster Dumbledore, why don't we go and see it together? I still remember when I was in school, every Quidditch match was so exciting. Dumbledore put away the suspension order and followed Malfoy out of the office with a frown on his face. In fact, he already had a rough guess in his mind. 
it should be that the Slytherin students rode home last night, explaining the troll invasion. You must know that the twelve school governors are all from ancient pure blood families. And most of their brood are in Slytherin. Quid ditch pitch. Listening to the cheers and shouts from outside, Lucas sighed inwardly. To be honest, he wasn't interested in quid ditch. First thing is that riding on a broom seems silly. The second is he feels that the sport is not fair at all, how can a seeker end a game just by catching the gold snitch? And a gold snitch has 150 points while only 10 points are awarded for one quaffle. It's so unfair. If your team's seeker ability is relatively weak, doesn't that mean you have to throw at least 15 quaffles before the opponent catches the golden snitch? This is still in the case of the opposing team scoring no points, which is too difficult. But because winning should be rewarded with achievement points, Lucas only silently disliked this sport in his heart. But preparations are not slow at all. There is still some time before the game starts. Looking at the eager players, Lucas coughed lightly and said, Seniors, before the competition, I have a few words to say to everyone. Everyone stopped talking and looked at the blonde boy standing in the front. Even though I'm only a first year, I really want to win this for Slytherin, not just for defeating Greyfinder. I want to win the Quidditch Championship, get the house points that belong to the champion, let the emeralds fill the hourglass that belongs to us Slytherin, and win the final House Cup. Speaking of the House Cup, the team members showed unprecedented ambition in their eyes. The House Cup represents glory. Since 1985, Slytherin has won the House Cup for six consecutive years. But this time is different, because Greyfinder has the famous Harry Potter. It wasn't so much that the Slytherins were trying to win the House Cup. Rather, it's trying to defeat Greyfinder who has the boy who lived. Lucas looked around at the crowd, taking in all their expressions. So, to avoid people talking badly about us, please change your previous behavior and show our Slytherin elegance to everyone. Please also trust me. I will definitely get the golden snitch first. After hearing what Lucas said, everyone looked at the captain Marcus Flint, this captain who looks like he has troll blood in his lineage. He grinned after hearing what Lucas said. Of course we believe in you, don't worry, we will definitely silence those guys this time. The other players followed suit. They couldn't really think of Lucas as a freshman. At this time, the voice of Lee Jordan could be heard narrating from the court. Accompanied by his voice, the players entered the field, and the door of the passage opened with a bang. Led by Lucas and Marcus, the Slytherin team flew out of the tunnel quickly. There was a huge cheer from the stadium. The usually restrained Slytherins also raised their banners at this moment. In their mouths, they kept shouting to the players in the sky. The Slytherin players formed a comb led by Lucas as they went around the field to salute the audience. When passing by the stands of family members and faculty members, Lucas saw Lucius Malfoy's position at a glance and gave a silent nod. At the same time Malfoy also nodded slightly to the flying blonde boy. His eyes then looked elsewhere and Lucas smiled slightly upon seeing this. It seemed that Mr. Malfoy had settled the matter. This time our headmaster Dumbledore must be very distressed, right? Backslash. Chapter 49, The Cursed Broom Why am I also implicated? The two teams appeared one after another. In the end, 14 people from the two teams formed a circle and players on both sides stared closely at their opponents. Greyfinder Captain Oliver Wood was seen staring at the opposite captain. Marcus grinned and said, Wood, you can rest assured that I won't knock you out today. Hey! Wood snorted coldly, obviously not believing what the other party said. Professor Hooch came to the middle of the field. In the box in front of her were three kinds of balls used in quidditch matches. The focus of today's game is on the seekers of both teams because both were famous people. Lucas was Slytherin's seeker, and his opponent is Harry Potter. The two are the influential figures of the school. And they both were an exception and were allowed to join the Quidditch team in the first grade, which attracted a lot of attention. Professor Hooch clearly understands this too, so she didn't intend to procrastinate. With Professor Hooch kicking the lid of the wooden box the bludgers and golden snitch flew into the sky at the same time. The golden snitch flickered before Lucas and Harry's eyes, then disappeared in the blink of an eye. Professor Hooch took out the quaffle. And as the whistle sounded, she threw the quaffle into the sky with all her might. This means that the whole game has officially started. Immediately there were deafening cheers from all around. Lucas lifted the broom lightly, immediately flying to the sky above the others. The advantage of this is that it does not interfere with the actions of other players. Second, the golden snitch is easier to spot at high altitudes. 
Harry followed suit and followed to the high altitude. Oh, it's Slytherin team captain Marcus Flint who has the ball now, Merlin, he looks like a troll. Okay, the quaffle got snatched by Angelina, the girl from Gryffindor, beautiful, brave, absolutely mesmerizing. Lee Jordan's unfair commentary draws a glare from Professor McGonagall. Lee raised his hands in surrender to prevent being scolded, but inwardly he was hiding his laughter. It can be explained why at critical moments, Slytherin will always be belittled. It also made the Slytherin students very unhappy. Damn. Who can make that guy shut his mouth? Draco looked dissatisfied at the high platform in the distance where Lee Jordan is commenting from. Damn it, I really want to jinx him. Hey guys, leave that guy alone and cheer for Lucas. Slytherin is not the only one who hates Lee Jordan's commentary at the moment, the other two houses were equally critical. Hermione looked at the commentary booth, and said dissatisfiedly, How can this guy say that? My dear, you have to learn to get used to it. In fact, Lee Jordan always only said good things about Gryffindor when commenting. After Cho Chong finished speaking, she turned her head and looked at Lucas in the sky. I really didn't expect Lucas to know how to play Quidditch. I just don't know how good he is. Hermione looked at her friend warily. She didn't forget what the other party had said. What Cho Chong likes the most is someone who can play Quidditch. Unfortunately, Lucas joined the Quidditch team. What's more, Cho Chong is also on Ravenclaw's team. Most unfortunately, both are seekers. Hermione suddenly hated Lucas' excellence, if only he could be more ordinary. Look. The snitch has appeared. Accompanied by Lee Jordan's shout, the audience in the stands immediately focused their attention on the two seekers. Lucas first saw a golden light flashing in the distance and just when he was about to go after it, Harry beside him suddenly swayed wildly. Lucas knew it was Quirrell who was casting a spell on Harry's broom. I'm sorry Harry, it looks like I'm going to take this victory. Lucas understood very well the principle of taking advantage of his opponent's weakness. But as soon as he flew a distance of 50 meters, the broom under his seat began to shake violently. Merlin. Why would I be implicated as well? Having no time to think about it, Lucas immediately started countering the curse on the broom. At the same time, Lucius Malfoy in the stands also watched Lucas' broom and helped with the counter curse. Merlin's beard, the brooms of the seekers of the two teams are going crazy. It is understood that they are using the latest Nimbus 2000 produced by Nimbus. Could it be that this broom has some unknown hidden dangers? Lee Jordan immediately raised the issue to the broom manufacturer. Originally, he wanted to continue talking. Unfortunately, it was stopped by Professor McGonagall. If it weren't for Lucas not caring about it at the moment, he would have given Lee Jordan a tongue-locking curse. You must know that Lucas is a shareholder of the Nimbus Company. If it is because of Lee Jordan's words that the sales of brooms were to be affected. He has the heart to kill the other party. Finding Lucas in danger, Hermione immediately borrowed a classmate's telescope. Taking a cursory look around, she saw Snape, who was also helping Harry with the counter curse. It's Professor Snape, he's casting the curse. Cho Chong looked puzzled, although Professor Snape always had a gloomy face. But as a professor, he shouldn't cast a curse on his students, besides, Lucas was a student at his own house. Hermione didn't care about that, she took her friend's hand and rushed towards Snape's stand. Draco also found the same situation at this time. Hesitating for a moment, he glanced at Lucas and Harry who were about to be thrown off the broom high in the sky. He also set off and walked over. Draco and Hermione met behind the stands. Needless to say, both of them understood what the other was here for. Under the joint efforts of the two, Snape's robes were set on fire the same as in the book. During the riot, Quirrell's curse was also forced to stop. Seeing Harry turn over and jump onto the broom, the audience in the stands cheered immediately. But Hermione soon found out that Lucas still seems to be under the influence of the curse. Backslash Chapter 50, Dumbledore's name has been added to Lucas' black book. Lucas concentrated on the counter curse, but it wasn't until Harry managed to get out of danger that his broom also stopped shaking. Lucas rolled over and jumped onto the broom. Cheers like a tsunami erupted from all around. Thanks to the contacts Lucas has maintained over the months, apart from Slytherins, many people from the other three houses are also cheering for him. But Lucas didn't look happy, because there are only a few people on the court who can cast a curse on him. First there was Snape, but he was obviously not going to harm the students of his house. Followed by Professor McGonagall and Professor Flitwick. 
but both are the kind of people who are just and fair so they wouldn't curse Lucas just for a quid ditch win or loss. So, there is only one person left. Headmaster Dumbledore. Although Lucas doesn't quite believe the answer, but a curse that he could not counter at all even after all this time. Only the mighty Dumbledore could do it. Although he doesn't know why the other party did this. Perhaps suspecting that he had put a jinx on Harry? Or he just doesn't want Lucas to win the game. In short, Dumbledore's name was on Lucas' little black book. Sooner or later, the twinkly old goat will have to pay for it. As for why Quirrell isn't in doubt, it's not that Lucas looked down on him. It's just that with his current smell of garlic, I am afraid that his body has already started decaying. How much magic power he has left is unknown, but it is certainly not as good as before. Looking at Harry who was flying fast ahead Lucas hunched over the broom. No one can stop him from earning achievement points, not even the golden boy. The Nimbus 2000 transformed by the system turned into a stream in the sky, chasing Harry and the golden snitch at a speed that was hard to tell with the naked eye. This modified Nimbus 2000 has a top speed of 400 km per hour, which is a full 100 km per hour faster than the broom Harry is using now. In theory, Lucas's current Nimbus 2000, modified, can already be compared with the firebolt produced two years later. Everyone saw the green stream representing Slytherin quickly approaching Harry. When he finally passed Harry he did a spin to show off a bit which made the little wizards in the stadium even more excited. The audience chanted Lucas' name as if he had already caught the gold snitch. Of course Harry wasn't reconciled. Desperately urging his broom, but watching Lucas's back getting farther and farther away. He also gradually became depressed in his heart. Lucas looked back over his shoulder and seeing Harry who was catching up, he smiled. Then he increased the flying speed of the broom. This time he was even faster than the golden snitch. When Lucas passed the snitch, he held it easily in his palm. Match over, let's congratulate Slytherin seeker Lucas Grindelwald for catching the golden snitch and ending the match. Don't be discouraged, ladies and gentlemen of Greyfinder, next time you will surely defeat the nasty Slytherins. Lee Jordan Professor McGonagall's voice came again. Lee Jordan dropped the microphone and ran off the stands. In the sky, the Slytherin team surrounded Lucas. Looking at the golden snitch in his hand, the smiles on everyone's faces were extremely bright. Lucas, it's great that you beat the boy who lived. Greyfinder has Harry Potter, and we have Lucas Grindelwald. Marcus Flint's already ugly face, his smile looked even more terrifying. But at the moment, no one pays attention to these things since everyone is too busy celebrating. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, the contest between the snake and the lion, reward, 200 achievement points. Ding, a new series of achievements has been detected, King of Slytherin, the host has to help Slytherin win the Quidditch Championship and win the House Cup with the highest score in history. You must score O in all subjects in the end of semester exam to complete this task series achievements. Note. This series of achievements is unique, no matter whether it is completed or not, it will not be opened again in the future. Complete this series of achievements, you will get a chance to draw a diamond prize pool. Seeing this Lucas' eyes lit up. Compared with the other two series of achievements, this one is undoubtedly easier to complete. Taking into account the current house points of Slytherin House, if he works harder, it will not be difficult to create the highest score in history. Just have to be careful to watch out for the old bee who likes to add points indiscriminately at the end of the year. At the end of this year, he might be able to get a chance to use the mysterious diamond lottery. After they finished celebrating, Lucas landed on the field with the broom. Harry came to his side at this moment, congratulations Lucas, I will try to win next time. Lucas smiled and nodded, vaguely giving an ambiguous answer. Wait until next year. Harry's opponent is probably about to be replaced by Draco Malfoy. On the way back to the dormitory Draco looked enviously at the broom in Lucas' hand. When will I be selected? I really envy you and Harry. Lucas threw the broom to the opponent, you will be the seeker next year, and I will only participate in this time. Hey! Draco was taken aback. And soon his expression became a little moved. House Quidditch teams have a fixed number of players. He believes that Lucas will quit voluntarily in order to let himself be selected. It has to be said. What a wonderful misunderstanding. Lucas just felt that since the series of achievements would not be triggered again in the future. Then it wouldn't be much fun to play on the house Quidditch team. As for the 600 achievement points brought by winning, Lucas didn't have to play to make them win. The system doesn't stipulate that Lucas must play, does it? 
he found that the Quidditch teams of the four houses did not seem to have the position of coach. The next day, Lucas left the Slytherin dormitory early. He came to the door of the headmaster's office on the seventh floor, and said to the stone gargoyle, Lemon drops. Boom. The gargoyle moved aside, revealing the stairs behind it. Time to see how our poor headmaster Dumbledore is doing. Thanks for listening. <laughs>